Hey, Shalom, everybody. Shalom, you should be able to see me now. Uh, Brian Christian, Ara'ah, Iralaya Rose, Job Israel, Believe Israel, Natalie Yamas, John Allen, Frost, Joanne Gilchrist, Holy Yasharala, Arama, Rashad, Manasseh, Yaikwa, Yara'ol, SOT Kaivan. What's going on? Shalom. All right, welcome to Sabbath class. Um, uh, have mercy with your brother uh, until I get my spirit. Uh, activated man it's just a tough day um i hope everybody's having a blessed week as uh we dwell in the fourth month of the lord's new year uh as we strive to keep the commandments and please the most high all right tonight's class okay tonight's class is understanding the change in the law it's been a question <clears throat> a scoff brought up consistently and I was like, I'm going to have to teach this on class. I'm going to have to speak about it specifically, okay, and uh, make the point plainly, all right? Um, just, just simply because um, as I talk to more and more of our Christian friends, I realize how simple they are when it comes to understanding the language used in the New Testament. They really don't understand it, okay? And a lot of them believe that God's laws are done away with under the premise that what certain scriptures say. So I want to, I want to, I want to just pull up some educational points and politic with y'all because y'all watch my classes, man. I'm grateful for that. Y'all donate to my camp. Y'all come see us teach. Um, y'all make food. Y'all, y'all just offer friendship, which is, goes a long way. Friendship goes a long way. And I'm a very appreciative, um, so this is our way of giving back is to teach informative lessons that are relative um, to uh, concerns that you have. Yo, Shalom, what's up? All right. Um, yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Yonatan, S.O.T., Araya, Yaiqua, Matthias, T. Sellers, Hadassah, Shalom, Carla Taylor, Boaz, Warrior Maya Ka'ala, Christina, Dre, Shalawam, all right. I heard Captain Micaiah on the call. I heard Brother Araya on the call. Shalawam, Kwame Shalu. All right. Um, if you was trying to join Sons of Thunder, um, we have closed the prospect phase. So if your emails are not in today, if I can't go into the email right now and get your name and phone number, you will not be contacted for an interview. All right. Um, we do have to scream, brothers. Every every brother is not a brother. Every Every person you meet is not your friend, uh, it is, especially if they have things that they want. And if they don't get what they want, they might not be your friend. You got to some some people are friends to the end and um, only time will tell. OK, so we got to prove a friend like the scriptures say. And you will regret it if you do not prove a friend. Man. All right. Shower Paul Riv, Rodney Stampley, Shalom, Theophilus Williams. OK, so. Again, tonight's lesson is understanding the change in the law. Understanding the change in the law. Y'all have to bear with me. My sword, I don't have it. All right, my Bible fell apart. I'm getting it repaired right now. And I'm going to really be put to the test because, you know, my Bible has the precepts in it. Okay? So it helps me as a teaching tool. The studying that I've done in the past, I could always take advantage of it because I have marked my book up. So we're going to see how uh, decent I am without my Bible. Maybe maybe it's, I'm not such a decent teacher. Maybe I just have a pretty good uh, sword. So we're going to see. It's going to be put to the test tonight. Khan? Um, you going to go on? Uh, all right. I got a charger. Um, go in, in that room behind the door. It's a charger for your phone, right? And then what I'll do is I'll drop the call and then we can log in on the clubhouse. We also teach on the clubhouse platform where we take questions and challenges. Today, I heard something disgusting. Today, I heard something terrible. A brother told me that we are better because the white man colonialized the world and we're better for it. I heard that. I had to log off the app. Damn. Yeah. Yo, when your brothers is talking like that, you need a break. You need a, you need a breather. That's like acid. That's like drinking poison, man. Shalom, Eliel, Kaya. DTA Twan, Clayton G, Shalom, 
da, da Kida Quida, all right, as people come into the room. Yeah, man, it's crazy. You know, the brother Theophilus said, wow. That's all you can say is, wow. A brother thinks we're better because the world got colonized. Like how? He said, you could have never flown on an airplane or experienced air conditioning. I'm like, sir, why do we need that? Why do I need to fly on an airplane or experience air conditioning sitting in traffic, driving to work so I could pay taxes? What, what do I need that for? You know, think about how many animals went extinct and how many beautiful places in the earth was destroyed so that Esau could colonize this place. Our people are sick, man, and they love their oppressor. All right. Let me get let me get a scripture on that, man. Let me get Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. All right. Kowal said, what in the hell? Yes, what I'm saying, brother, I have no idea. But uh, Jake is out of his mind. OK, this captivity has made him crazy. OK. And he is out of his mind. Some some of it is not even his fault, man. You know, but what we're going to do is we're going to enjoy the word of the most high and, and, and enjoy the instruction. OK, uh, you know, and just remember what I'm saying, man. You know, you got to prove your friends, keep your friends close to you, keep your brothers close to you, man. In these last days, because sometimes people need to be built up, man. You never know what nobody is going through. And a lot of people in these last days, they lack something called empathy. They don't, they don't know how to look at anything through someone else's eyes. So the only thing they're concerned about is how they feel about something. And when we behave like that, we become an Edomitic. We become like Esau, who only cares about himself. We got to continue to care, care for one another, be long suffering, and show kindness towards one another. You know, we have to, we have to make an effort to love each other in these last days because it's so easy to hate one another. And Satan would like nothing more. All right. And if you can't realize that, you're losing at this 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 battle that we're fighting. Okay. So some things are some things should get you mad, and, and some things should invoke patience. So when it comes to your people, you should be long suffering and kind. But when it comes to your oppressor, you should feel like this. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. All right, what that say. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. And the, and the word mad there is insane. It doesn't mean mad like angry, want to fight. It means it makes you out of your mind. It makes you mad. You've gone mad. That kind of mad. This is King's English. When we say I'm getting mad, what we really mean is, is I'm about to get crazy, but we mean it just like I'm angry, right? No, the Bible has that word. Angry is in the Bible. When this says mad, it means it's really going to make you insane. A oppression will make you insane. Watching your own brothers justify people who are oppressing and seek to be like them and then see even when you try to be like them they don't let you but you still idolizing these people you've gone insane brother captivity has destroyed your mind read it one more time surely oppression maketh a wise man mad of course come on and a gift destroyeth the heart and then any your heart is your mind and any gift that your oppressors all offers you, all of a sudden your mind is destroyed. You 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 now think this person is your friend. You are crazy if you think that to be so. Because the truth of the matter is the Bible feels like this. Go to Psalm chapter 73. All right. Even David went through these emotions, man. And uh, controlling your emotions in these last days is very important. Our sisters have no clue how to control their emotions. They don't know. Um, they're not taking it seriously and making exercises out of bridling their emotions. And then you, as men, are behaving like them. That's why we call you what? A feminine. When you get, when you start doing stupidity because you're upset, you're behaving in an effeminate way. Why do we, why? You're not popping your gum and putting a dress on. So why do we call you a feminine when you behave emotionally and lose your rational frame? It is because the Bible teaches us that our sisters, when it comes to their feelings, they, they're going to go uh, off the deep end and there's nothing you can do about it. That's why you have to be a man and be understanding when you deal with them. But from our brothers, we don't expect that. I don't expect my brothers to behave that way, to shoot each other, to rob and kill each other, to get mad over getting your shoes stepped on. Now you're putting somebody to death. That's effeminate, bro. You have to overcome your emotions and be a true man and master of your soul. You have to overcome your spirit. All right. But even David has commentary on uh, through Asaph, the chief recorder has commentary on this. Read this Psalm 73 and verse three. 
Psalm chapter 73 and verse 3. Bring it out. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands on their death, but their strength is firm. Come on. They are not in trouble as other men. See, the, our oppressor is not as in trouble as other men. You know, they get pulled over at the stoplight. They're not sweating buckets. And they can be dirty. They don't care. They expect to be treated a certain way because mm -hmm. this is their land. All right? You, you got a shirt and tie on and you're headed to work and you get pulled over and you're afraid because you're in trouble. They are not in trouble like other men. Read on. Come they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they played with other men. And they're not it's like a played like other men. And they're not going through the poverty and 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 the and the depression that you're gonna suffer. The plague of the mind of living through this captivity. They're not dealing with that. Okay. They are able to rationalize the world they live in because it makes sense to them. But you, as a captive, this world does not make sense at all. All right. And you got to understand that it's going to it's going to it's going to play with your spirit. And then you're going to deal with regular everyday issues on top of that. And you're going to become overwhelmed. You have to keep a bridle on your spirit. People will like nothing more than to take the slightest outburst or thing that you say while you're angry and use it against you. Act like they can't understand you was mad. And that's why you said that. Meanwhile, the burden flips and now you have to understand everything. And when somebody's upset, no matter how nasty or evil they be in, you, you have to understand it. And that's unfair, but that's the condition of the battle. Read on. Con, therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have no, it's like it, they have more than heart could wish. They have more than anybody could wish, okay? They have more than anybody could wish. So guess what? Even when they're not doing well in life, they're still doing better than you. Read on. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. That's the key scripture that I wanted. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. So even your own brothers, when they behave like the oppressor, they are corrupt when they do that. Mm -hmm. And now they're speaking wickedly concerning oppression. They're, they're justifying and telling you that they think it's cool that the earth got colonized, man. What are you, what, man? Wow. You know how many people died? And got destroyed. A, a, a very tough question I like to ask all the time is, what would you tell? You can turn the light on in the hallway so you can see, bro. What would you tell the Native American Indians to do to everybody that got off those boats when they first landed on the shores of America? That's a hard question. Everybody that's trying to justify the other nations and what these people are doing, they never know how to answer that question. Right. They'd be like, "Well, I tell them to." Deal with them accordingly. What does that mean? Well, I tell them to, um, you know, tell them you're not messing around and send them back home. Uh, huh? Do you know how history played out? Do you think that was an option? So when we can't be real about simple things, it's it gets to a point, guys. When we can't be real about simple things, it gets to a point like, you know what? We're not being real with your own self. Okay. And it sucks, all right? Uh, me and Captain Malachi have been saying something for a few weeks now, and I've been pondering it, you know, going through my own trials. Yo, it sucks being black. Damn! Like, we've been saying that. We, we went out to eat, and our own sister serving us food treated us like absolute garbage. And we was right. prepared to tip her and bless her beyond measure because that's how we treat our people. Thanks for serving us. Right. I know they're not treating you right, but we're going to treat you right. And we would talk to like absolute garbage and then blamed for being upset about it. That's the cycle. That's what I don't understand. I'll never understand that about Eve. I'm going to talk to you like garbage. I'm going to treat you like garbage. But when you get mad, that's what I'm mad at. Huh? They don't understand. So then it's like you as the man, you have to be super understanding and I thought I was being that night, if you remember. I thought yeah. I was being. I said yes. And I got accused of having an attitude for saying the word not yeah, not yup. Yes. I, she took that offensively. Now you know you can't win. So now it's just like, yo, this is only happening because we black. Yeah, let's go she ahead would, and get this over with. Yeah, let's get it over with. She would never treat the other nations like this. And they could serve her like, and they could talk to her like a dog. She's going to be eager to. It's, it sucks so much being black that even your own people 
you're not uh, being catered to and treated with love. And that's why we have to come out in the streets and teach. That's the purpose of Hebrew Israelite instruction. We have to first teach, first and foremost, you Blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, how to love one another. That's what's missing. We got to teach you how to talk to each other. We got to teach you how to be. We, 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 we have to teach you how to have mercy on one another. But we don't have to teach you how to love the other nations. And we don't have to teach you how to rationalize and justify the decisions and choices that they make. Because right. you do it already. Right. It's crazy, right. man. It is crazy. But it could be awesome. It could be amazing. It could be wonderful if we, tr if we came back to the knowledge as repentant Hebrew Israelites and treated each other as sons of Jacob and honored and preferred one another in brotherly love. Right. Sure. So when I teach you, I teach myself because I'm an emotional dude. I ain't going to lie. There's no reason to flex. Right. If I get in a, in a jam, I might make an irrational decision. But me, I, I'm not allowed to do that. Right. Brothers like, yo, you the leader of the camp. Sister be like, you're supposed to be a teacher. Right. I can't even be a human being. I, if, matter of fact, any fault in me, it becomes sensationalized. I, I learned that. When I was thrust into a leadership position and Priest Abak tried to prepare me for that, he told me it was going to be that way. You're not going to get a fair shake at nothing. If you do something wrong, it's going to be a huge deal. Whereas another brother could do something wrong and people will pat him on the back and tell him they understand why he did that. Get ready. And, I, and, I, and I'm seeing that, man. But I'm, I'm built for the task and so is my captain. And of course, we teach the soldiers the same lessons. So when they elevate they will be prepared as well because it ain't about me. This 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 whole camp structure and design is to build up a team of, 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 of leaders, all right? Brothers that could go out and be pillars in their community. And that's all we really want. Everybody understand? All right. Um. So, go ahead. Somebody says, Salakia? I have a kind of the one. I had a priest of Ecclesiastes 4-1. Okay, good. We're going to have... um. Malachi is going to read it, or one of the brothers here. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, and verse 1. When everybody has it, say kind. Uh, so. Got a little background noise there. Find out who that is. Yo, can the people even hear me? Can y'all hear on the call? I'm going to fix this in one second. Okay. Brother Dura, go ahead. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, and verse 1. Come on. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comfort. None. And on the side of their oppressors, there was power, but they had no comfort. Mm. Comforter, so I can. Break it down. You want me to keep reading or, or what? Uh, nah, like, that, was the, that was the point right there. And that's exactly what Adewan was bringing out. That amongst our people, there's nobody giving us comfort. We can't even seek rest of, amongst our own people. When you in the seat of judgment, they, don't, they, they throw stones at you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Every turn, you have no comfort. And then our people turn and say, hey, the oppression of the white man is what makes us good. Oh. As the scriptures say, we in tears because of this oppression. Right? We hurt and we destroy because of this oppression. But what? There's no comfort amongst our own brethren. That's why in uh, Deuteronomy 28, 68, he said nobody's going to be able to redeem you out of this slavery, out of this oppression, mm. out of this position. Right? But, hey, through the scriptures, we get that comfort and that ability to have but brotherhood, peace in our nation. Mm. And I use That's a great point. Thank you, brother. All right, go ahead, Art. Can we read uh, 2, 3, and 4? Come on, verse 2. Wherefore, I praise the dead, which are already dead, more than the living, which are yet alive. Yea, better is he that... Like you, better is he than both they which have not yet been, who have not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. It's like it. Solomon is saying the same thing Adam want to say earlier. Yo, it's basically like it sucks to be black. Like it sucks to exist 
in a t- in a place in a time where you're treated worse than than scum, right? Solomon is even saying it was better to to have even been dead than to be alive during this oppression. But mm. even there are those who are bet it's, it's, it's more profitable to be one who has not even been born yet, though, and who will not see these oppressions, right? Like, blessed is that generation that shall come, which shall not know the sting of oppression mm. and the bitterness of death, man. So we that's what we're working for. We're working toward that goal to bring up that generation which have never known these things which we've seen. But verse 4 is the last, last one. Again, I considered all travail and every right work that for this a man is in envy of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. And this is all vexation of spirit because even when you do good in this place, your people still hate you. And that's why the prophets were, were hated among their people. Because even to do good in this place, that, that evil eye towards your brother, that curse is still real and it reminds you every day. And that's why Solomon said, yo, it's... it's it's travail of spirit to, to have wisdom and know all these things, right? Mm-hmm. To notice these things brings a heavy heart. So mm. that's the burden you have to carry in this truth. Con. Great points, great points. All right. Um Theophilus Williams says these animals are treated better than us. Oh, yeah. You you kick a puppy, you're going to jail. <laughs> you shoot a small African American child playing in his backyard, and people trying to hear you out. Huh? Right. You know, you you Caesar Caesar from um Black Ink beat his pit bull. Now I'm gonna say this. I watched the video, I don't care who don't like it. He didn't even hit he he was exaggerating his anger. He didn't even hit the dog that hard. He hit the dog with a chair to show his frustration, but he didn't hit the dog with the chair like how you supposed to hit something with a chair. Right. It was just let's What's near me? You stupid dog, right? Because right. he says his dogs was trying to kill each other when he came home, so they was biting each other in the throat, and he was really upset. And the dog didn't even yelp when he hit him, because he didn't hit him that hard. It was it was more like how your mom's to hit you with like yeah, a, a, like a, shoe. a shoe or, or a race, tr- whatever's near her, yeah. but she's not really trying to hit you with it. It's just, I'm trying to let you know I'm displeased with you. And it was like that. And that's also cultural that people don't understand. Like, if you watch the video like a PETA person, right. oh! But if you watch it like a regular person, like that, yeah, he really didn't even hit the dog. It, he hit the dog with a chair, but he didn't beat the dog with a chair. Right. He just picked up the chair and said, man, you stupid dog, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Right? Because that was the only thing near him. Now, I can understand that because he's my brother. I don't hate him. A dog is a dog, and he's a human being right. with a life that he's probably pampering that dog, too. So... And the dog didn't even run away after it hit him. The dog just looked at him like, you mad at me for real? He's like, yeah, you stupid. Right? Wait, that dude loses his job. And that's, and, and these people are so hypocritical because they kill everything. They animals. blast animals with high-powered rifles. And then take pictures right. of it like a trophy. But that's okay. But disciplining your pit bull, who's... If you don't, they you are a pit bull owner. If you don't discipline your pit bull, what happens to the dog? Yeah, it gets put down. Or how does it behave if you don't show him discipline? Yeah, it gets aggressive, and then it gets put down. Yeah. Malachi, it's wild. If you don't, if you don't train your pit bull the correct way, it, it'll be wild. So when he came home and he seen his dog biting the other dog in the throat, was he happy or sad to see that? He was sad to see that. Now, what is his, what is going to be his reaction? Because he don't want to. You don't want to have your dog put down. What you going to do? Discipline him so he knows not to do the things that you don't like. I've seen people beat a pit bull with a belt. Mm-hmm. Or with a chunk lock, which is a, a slipper. And the dog, and five minutes later, the dog is in your lap licking you in your face. Right. And he won't do that again. But that's cultural. You, you People who kiss their dog in the mouth and sleep with their dog in the bed and eat off the same spoon as their dog do not understand. Yeah. Right? But they do understand when people throw a bottle at me, a human being, for just standing outside. They do understand police suspecting me of doing something, beating me black and bloody, telling me to stop resisting when I done gave up, right. only to later say, oh, well, we thought you were somebody else. They understand that. They understand walking in an apartment and shooting a dude eating ice cream on his couch, and then your excuse is, 
I walked into the wrong. I thought it was my house. Right. And now we can hug and love on this person, yeah. but don't beat your pit bull. Who's tough? That dog right. was bred to fight wolves. You look right. at them, them dogs, them, you see muscles everywhere. Yeah. Like the dog wasn't even, the dog didn't even go, Arr! I've stepped on a dog's tail and it hurt him. Yeah. That what Caesar did to that dog. I'm being real, man. I watched it like, that's what they mad about? He, I, I've seen worse. Okay. But if, I've seen dudes, ab I've seen an animal abused and it hurts me. That dog was not being abused. But the point we making is because he's black, forget him. Just ru ruin his livelihood. And guess who sent the video out? His woman. What? Why would you do, do that? that because she's crazy. mad. So now I have to destroy yeah, your I life. And, and, and you know, it's crazy. She knew. She knew that these people would react this way. Of course. About something like that. Of course. So Eve is not dumb to the oppression. No, that she's not. Her brother or that her husband suffers from. She will, she'll even weaponize it. That's why I don't understand sometimes about our people. That's what Solomon's talking about. I'm telling you, the, our elders told us when a woman get mad, she'll say "f you" and the Bible. That's. Yeah. I, I'm here today to tell you you can't do that. All right, because I get mad a lot, but when I get mad, I can't act on it and later expect you to understand. Oh well, I was mad. That's why I behaved that way. No, I have to have such excellent discipline. But more importantly, I have to be an example of what a, a true Israelite is supposed to behave like. So I have to carry myself a certain way. Right. And you sisters also, you're under the same um, magnifying glass because you have to teach the nation what a proper sister is like. This is an Israelite woman. I'm not one of these girls in the world that approach things this way. I'm an Israelite woman. I'm going to approach it this way. Right. All right. And the most high going to justify me in the end if I'm mistreated. And that's wisdom. Right. So we got to take that with us going forward as a nation, man. We're in the fourth month. All right, the time is steadily moving along. Let's continue to grow and improve as a people. And, and don't, don't let Satan be, be able to play you like an instrument. You know, Joel gonna, if I attack Joel this way and, and, and make it personal, he gonna put the Bible down. He ain't gonna go to camp. That's how you, no, I'm gonna still do my thing, man. I'm gonna still serve the most high. It's my reasonable service. And That's I, right. And I expect that from the rest of you brothers, Khan. Huh? Yeah. Uh, all right, so. With that being said, uh, we're going to get to the uh, the lesson for the night. You know, we just had to talk about the state of the nation and things of that nature. Oh, Salakia, just a, a quick reminder. Um, the nationwide fast on July 13th is coming right, up. Right. So, you know, a lot of camps. Um, we're, we're gathering together and calling for a nationwide fast on the 13th at sundown. So if you want to participate, there's your, your invitation right there. Come, come. All right, Brother Yakov said, that never made no sense. I was mad. That's why I did that. Mad is not a justification for your actions. We are adults now. Yeah, you got to, not just adults, we Israelites. So we got to move a certain way, man. All right. Here, here, you know, we don't use the scriptural examples the way that they're supposed to be used. David is always used as a scapegoat, but right, people but, but people fail to understand. The Bible recorded David doing that right. with Uriah the Hittite and said that's a fault against him. Right. But the Bible also redeemed him and said, yes, he did that. But besides that, his heart was perfect towards the Most High and he served his God flawlessly. So we're not just tearing people down. We acknowledging when they get up too. Kind. Right. Peter. Everybody want to use Peter as a did not Peter lie. I've seen people use Noah as a did not Noah did not Noah Wasn't he a drunk? Stop. Right. What are you doing? Cool. Noah. One time after he got off a flood, there was on 40, 40 days and 40 nights and everybody he ever knew died. Right. Everybody. Brother can't have some wine and pass out after being trapped on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like y'all sympathy go out the window. And you pick and choose what you have sympathy for. And we can't be like that. All my sympathy goes to my nation. It's really nothing you could do to me to make me hate you as a fellow Israelite, man. You know, I'm always going to open, open my phone line. I'm going to talk to you and, and we can work it out and be brothers or be brothers and sisters again. All right. Because that's what the Lord said. Go to Matthew 6 and read 14. Go to Matthew 6 and 14, man. 
Uh, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye, if ye forgive not men their trespasses, mm -hmm. neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Well, what else you need to know? When it comes to, damn, I'm mad about something, but damn, I could forgive him, man. I ain't got to stay mad. I could be mad, but am I going to hold a grudge? That's against the commandments. You're going, you going off. And we got to learn that as Israelites, man, and just zoom past that. Because these other nations have no mercy for us. Right. Okay? Nothing. They would like nothing more than to throw you in the bottom of a jail yeah. and feed you pork and you live like an animal. Y'all ever watch 60 Days In, man? My brothers ain't supposed to be living like that, huh? Trapped in there stinks in there the food they feeding them is garbage how you gonna rehabilitate a man in those conditions you forcing him to descend even deeper into his animal nature because he got to behave like that to survive in there right and that's the hip that's the um hypocrisy of the uh, judicial system but that's a whole nother um conversation but notice what i said about forgiving your neighbor this is what christ came to teach this is why he is a priest after the order of Melchizedek because his priesthood even though in the time of Moses there was repentance and I can show you that right I can show that in the time of Moses there was repentance right let's go to the apocrypha real quick uh, I think I want wisdom of Solomon yeah, how you know? I was watching a, uh, right a video earlier with Priest Sabat where he was teaching uh, about the law. The elder's amazing, man. You, you I literally watched that before I went to camp today. You, you, these videos is not just comic books that you put away after you read it one time. God. You revisit these videos again and again. Go read that. Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 1. Read, read. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15 and verse 1. Go ahead. But thou, O God, are gracious and true, long suffering, and in mercy ordering all things. This is this is what you call the intertestimonial period when these texts was uh, revealed. And we see that the most high has mercy. This is before Christ came. Read on. For if we sin, we are thy, knowing thy power, but we will not sin, knowing that we are counted thine. And if thy seed remaineth in thee, because they sinneth not. That's John taught that. That's a precept for this. Read on. For to know thee is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. Come on. For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with diverse colors. The painter's fruit, fruitless labor. Now, now they're about to get into them putting these images up to deceive you, but the point is already made. Mercy is in the Old Testament. All right? The Most High been had mercy. Okay? So what we're saying is the, the mercy had limits under the Levitical priesthood, okay? And we're going to show you first the scripture that the Christians use to suggest that the law is done away with, right. and then we're going to show you how to uh, practically apply this, and then we'll take some questions and shut it down. These classes have been going a long time, but the Sabbath was made for man. We're not going to keep y'all on here all night unless y'all want to be. Um, does, is anybody on the clubhouse? Don't worry about it. They don't get, they, they're going to have to log on to YouTube tonight, all right? Um, go to Hebrews chapter seven, and I want you to get verse eleven. This, you said seven and eleven. Yes. Come. This is the book of Hebrews chapter seven and verse eleven, and it reads. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, mm -hmm. what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? So what, 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 listen, Christians don't say what they mean. Mm -hmm. They assert things and then use a scripture to back up their assertion, but they don't tell you their premise in the first place. If my premise is to teach that we no longer have to keep the Mosaic law, I have to say that. Mm -hmm. They don't. They'll say something like this. Y'all still keeping that old law, but didn't the law change? That's a loaded question because you would be wrong to say no. 
right? You would be wrong if you said no. No, it, the scripture is going to say it. But what he means by that is, so because I have a verse that says there must be a change in the law, I believe you no longer have to keep the commandments. But they're not going to say that. If, if you force a Christian or a person you're reasoning with to take a position, you can debate them. If you just talk barbershop talk with them, they can assert anything as much as they want, but you're going to lose because the goalpost will never be stationary. They'll, when you're about to kick your field goal and, and get the three points to close the game in overtime, they're going to move the goalpost. So if you, if you try to delve into a theological discussion, always ask your Christian friend, what is your premise? Well, what's, you got me looking at a scripture, but to say what? And let's see if the scripture says what you're about to assert. Because mm -hmm. if you're bringing me here to teach that we no longer have to keep the Mosaic law, I would like to see that here. Right. But this verse is not saying that. Right. You're about to see. Read 11 again. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there? that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. So so if the, the first law wasn't perfect. It says it. If, if perfection was possible by the Levitical priesthood, we'd still be under that. But we, we're not under that. There must be a change in the law. Oh, okay, that's, that's I agree. But you say that to say what? Y'all have to learn to ask that. What are you getting at? That we ain't got to do them old laws. Okay. Um, if that's their assertion, I need to be able to read that. Because I didn't see you don't have to keep the Mosaic law here. I see a commentary on if that law was perfect, there would be no need for a new priesthood. But because the law is not perfect, does that mean you don't do it? And when it says the law is not perfect, in what sense are they saying? Because um, the law is just and holy and good. Mm -hmm. And that's Paul. And Paul is the teacher of who we believe wrote Hebrews, which is Timothy. We led to believe that in the Byzantine tradition, because that's what your King James Bible comes from. We taught it last week. We believe that Timothy wrote this. Well, if... Paul is his instructor, and Paul says the law is just and holy and good. Then Timothy believes that mm -hmm. it's only it's only it's only a reasonable uh, uh, assumption that Timothy would believe that because Paul taught him, right? Now wait a minute. What am I getting at by saying that the law is not perfect? If I'm if I don't mean that it's flawed, isn't there a scripture that says for finding fault with them? First of all, that's talking about people, not the law. And that's Hebrews 8 and 8. And we can go through that. OK, but this is how you're going to argue with your Christian friend. Everything is going to be coming from like an angle. It's not going to be. See, this is what I'll do. I believe that you have to keep the law, statutes and commandments forever. See how I just said that? I bet you I can get a scripture that says that. Not what I feel proves what I'm thinking. No, I'm going to get a scripture that tells you that the law is forever. Baruch 4 and 1. Watch. I just said something. I believe the law, statutes, and commandments stand forever, and you have to keep them. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. How long does it endure? Forever. Does that scripture say what I just said? Yeah. See how I did that? Now, you might say, well, I want to debate that with other scriptures. Fine. But you can't say, I suggested something that the Bible didn't say. This verse that we're reading right now does not say, stop keeping the law. It just says the, Levitic, the Levitical law was not perfect. But now we have to analyze that before we move on. In what sense? The law was not perfect because it could not justify everybody. Right. Not that there was something wrong with those laws. See, the perfection, again, the law is just and holy and good. Okay? But it's not perfect. But in what sense? That it can't justify everybody. I'm going to give you an example. Go to Leviticus 20 and read verse 13. This book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. Now, if the Levitical priesthood, uh, the laws under the Levitical priesthood were perfect, you could come back from this. But let's see what happened. If a man also lied with mankind 
as he lied with the woman. Both of them have committed an abomination. And? They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So what's the penalty for sodomy? Death. Is the law wrong for telling you not to be a sodomite? So is there a fault in that law? So what, when the writer of Hebrews is saying that it's it, it wasn't perfect, it's not perfect, what is he really saying? He's saying certain laws you cannot come back from. A perfect law will have place for everyone is what he's getting at. He's getting at a perfect law where... Hey, you can be this type of person, but if your heart and mind changes, even you can come back to the most high. Wait a minute. Am I saying that or is that what this is teaching? Read on. Verse 12. For the priesthood, it's like in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now, now, there's your scripture. For the priesthood being changed, there must what? There is made of necessity a change also of the law. Does that say you no longer have to keep the law? No. That's, the, that's what you was arguing with when you was up there with that Christian pastor or when your holy rolling aunt was telling you that law changed, baby. That first law wasn't perfect, so there had to be a change in the law, baby. What she means by that is there's something wrong with the first law, and now you no longer have to keep that. Is that what this is teaching? No. It's not. It's talking about the priesthood, and there's a law that pertaineth to the priesthood. Right. That's it. Right. It has no, thou shalt not commit adultery is perfect. You're not supposed to do that. Right. right? That doesn't change. But there's a judgment that comes with committing adultery. What is it, brothers? Yeah, Can yeah. you prove it with the Bible, though? Read again. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, and verse 14. Come on. And if a man take a wife and her mother. No, that's not what you like. Not that. Get the law on adultery. It should be in the same chapter. It should, and in Deuteronomy 22 as well. Come. Get Exodus 20 uh, and um, 14. That's the foundational scripture. But I want to get the judgment. Get Leviticus 20 and 10. Go ahead. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 10. Go ahead. And the man that commit, committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. Now, look at that. There's no coming back from that. You committed adultery. You laid with another man's wife. I don't care if she was mad. I don't care if he was mad. I don't care if he left for a long journey. I don't care. That was another man's wife. Two, three witnesses seen that you did that. You're going to die. Right? right? The, the first law makes no place for that sin, even in ignorance. That's right. And that's what the author of Hebrew Hebrews was discussing when he said, if perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, what need is there for a change that a new priest should come in the order of Melchizedek? You can't be perfect once you've committed adultery. You have to die. Perfection cannot be attained. You can't do it. You've already offended. You're done. You was a sodomite coming out of the land of Canaan. You're done. You missed the day of atonement. You cut off from the people. You're done. You missed the Passover. Forget about it. Yeah. You're not circumcised on the eighth day. On what day you got circumcised? The tenth. Mm. Can't gather. Perfection cannot be attained by those people, even though their heart and desire was for it. They can't have it, based on the Levitical priesthood. Do you understand what we're saying? On a call, do you understand what I'm saying? It's a delay. You got to give him a second. Uh, 
with that understanding, we're going to read verse 12 again. Time. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made necessity a change also of the law. Come on. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Now, wait a minute. All it was talking about is Christ, your new priest, is coming from a tribe where Moses did not prescribe priesthood. Right. Go to Deuteronomy 21 and 5. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 21. And read, stay in Hebrews and read that again after he reads this. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 5. And the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near. Say it again. And the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near. Who Go to um, Deuteronomy 10 and 8. Okay. And then you get Deuteronomy 17 and 9. Right? Just some examples. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 8. What's that say? At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi. To bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. Now, what did it say in Hebrews right there? It said he in Hebrews uh verse 13. Uh yeah, verse 13. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, which which no man gave attendance at the altar. And read what you have again. What was who was that who was giving attendance at that altar? Deuteronomy 10 and 8. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. So to uh, to do that, to, to, to be at the altar, you had to be a Levite. <clears throat> to minister to the Lord or do the service of priesthood, you had to be a Levite. Uh, read the other precept. Book 17 and 9. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 9. And thou shalt come unto the priests of the the priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. Now go to um, um, Deuteronomy 21 and 5. God, this book of Deuteronomy. Wait, no, I read that already. Give me, uh, Slaki, I just had it. Uh, give me Numbers 3 and 6. I got this. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 3 and verse 6. Come on. Bring the tribe of Levi near. And get number 16 and 9. That's the last one. We made the point. And present them before Aaron the priest. Bring who? Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest. To do what? That they may minister unto him. See, see what I'm saying? That the tribe of Levi, the sons of Aaron, are the priests. All right? Numbers 1 and 50. Somebody get that. Just the I got a thousand presets, right? Because I, I got it on my screen. I'm I'm taking advantage of uh, the tools that I use to preset my Bible. There's a video on the channel called How to Precept Your Bible. And if it wasn't for the white man, you wouldn't have that. <laughs> So Just ain't that what Tamario said? That's now when people say that, uh, let me say this. While we was getting our back kicked in, while we was picking 300 pounds of cotton a day, while our women were being raped and we were being killed, the other nations had time to play with translations, study the scrolls. Even our brothers were still doing it. But they had to be in a place where they were able to do that. But for the majority, they do not have access to these things. Now, in these last days, we have access to these tools. I'm going to use this. Okay? Only we think like that. See, it was a black man who invented the filament in the light bulb. The white man did not say, I'm going to throw out the design for the light bulb because it's built on something that a black man pioneered. And I hate niggas, so I'm not going to do it. We're going to find a new way to illuminate the house. No. He said, that's good. I'm going to take that and build on that. Right. And that's what we're doing. That's good. Thank you for doing the lexicon work. Thank you for doing the translation work. Thank you. All right? And now I'm going to take that, and we're going to build on that and raise up our nation. All right? Because you might have the ability to translate, which I could do, but the work is already done. I'm not about to beat the dead horse. Since the work is already done, I'm going to take that because one thing you're lacking is the doctrine. Right. The wicked shall not understand. Right. So I'm going to take the lexicon work you did, and from there, I'm going to build up the doctrine. All right? I said that because uh, Malachi felt the need to scoff. All right? Read Numbers 1 and 50. This book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 50. 
For thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. Now read Hebrews 7 and 13 one more time to get the point of what the author of Hebrews was actually saying. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 13. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Thank you. So now we're making a new priesthood. The law had to change to allow for a new priesthood because the person that's going to be doing it is not a Levite. And we talking about Christ. You understand that? That's what this is talking about. This is not talking about stop keeping the new moon. Stop keeping the Sabbath. Stop keeping a dietary law. No, this has nothing to do with that. Right. This is saying literally your new priest comes from a tribe that Moses did not say should be doing the priest work. Right. So the law must change to allow for that. So Timothy might have been writing this down on a new moon. You yes. understand? <laughs> read on, read on. Verse 14. Verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. And they tell you right there. Right. See, our Lord came out of Judah. Why, why is that even written? And then when, we, when you show this to your Christian brothers, they want to uh, go elsewhere. Yes. They don't want to stay here anymore. They're not going to acknowledge, hey, wait a minute. I thought this meant A, and you're proving to me it means B. Thank you. I'll stop using this scripture like that. You're never going to get it. No. Read on. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Come on. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arise another priest. Read. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an in endless life. See, y'all keeping that carnal law. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That carnal law. That's what they do. They take excerpts from the scripture to assert something, but they don't choose a position and then say, this scripture is teaching that. Right. When this says the carnal law, what they mean by that is keeping the Mosaic law is carnal. We don't have to do that anymore. But if they say that and read this verse, this verse is not teaching that. Right. And that's, you know what I'm saying? And that's the problem. Right. All right. If you watched uh, the video this week, we was dealing with the Jehovah Witnesses and put two videos out for that. Because we had two Jehovah Witnesses that we had to uh, correct and point out things. And a brother called me from Cali and said, I never thought to look at it like that. They always tell us, follow Christ's teachings. But Christ taught the Old Testament and the law. If that's the case, then we should be able to tell people that we're supposed to teach Obadiah. If we're supposed to teach Obadiah, how can I teach that and teach that they're going to be saved at the same time? Right. If Obadiah says the Edomites must be destroyed, how can I teach that and teach that all nations can be saved at the same time? Right. No Christian can rationalize that. Yeah. They cannot do that. So now what happened? You get this new spiritual Israel doctrine. Mm -hmm. And no scripture says that. No. What they mean by that is any nation can become an Israelite. Right. But they won't say that. Because what scripture in the whole Bible says that? No. So they have to play a game of assertions. That's what we're dealing with. Exactly. So now what you're talking about in Hebrews 7, the carnal law, they're just asserting that Moses' law is carnal and the new law they follow is spiritual. That's wrong because the Bible says the law is spiritual. That's right. Paul says that. So now what? You And now you start to realize why the Most High chose you to wake up and come into this truth. Yep. Because this doctrine is ironclad. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. It's beautiful how through patience and study, any challenge can be answered, right? Because the Bible is complete. Christian doctrine is not complete. Keep reading. Uh, 17. Verse 17. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Watch this. Read. For there is barely a dis disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Uh-oh. That carnal law that you following, the Bible said that that's weak and unprofitable. 
excuse me? There's, you, you shall have no other gods before me. Is right. that weak and unprofitable? Uh -uh. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Is that weak and unprofitable? Thou shalt not murder. Is that weak and unprofitable? Uh, uh, Thou shalt not steal. Is that weak and unprofitable? Uh, what about this law that says, hey, you cannot even bear a grudge against the children of your own people. Is that weak and unprofitable? Uh, uh, what, what about the law that says you cannot lay with your sister for she is near of kin? Is that weak and unprofitable? Uh, so, what, so here's what they're asserting, but they, again, if you make them take a position, they're finished because they won't do that. They have to assert these things. Here's what they assert in with that verse. Read that verse again. Um, verse uh, 18. <laughs> For there is barely a disannulling of the commandment. The law has been disannulled. <laughs> Moses' law has been disannulled. That's what they mean when they mention this verse. Yeah. But us reading to this point, we know what this is talking about. Right. The law says the Levites have to do these things. Mm -hmm. But your new priest is not a Levite. He's from Judah. It's evident. Therefore, the law must be disannulled because it was weak and unprofitable. That's what's being said. Just making it so only the Levites can do the priesthood work would block Christ, who was prophesied to come right. for doing his job. Right. So that part of the law, that law was weak and unprofitable. So it has to be disannulled. Right. If it was allowed to stand, it would become unprofitable. Did you know that the Bible foresaw this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even in the law, it told you that there was a time coming where there was someone like Moses, like of his brethren, and you're supposed to listen to him. Right. And this is the revelation. Your, your leader, his name is Christ, but he does not come from Levi, a tribe which Moses did not speak about concerning priesthood. He comes from. Read that, Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. Mm. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Mm. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Mm. Well, who is he? Who is he talking about? A Muslim will tell you that's Muhammad, <laughs> but no, that's forbearing Christ to that's come. Right. Okay. Without knowing these things and being versed in this, this part of Scripture could really confuse you. All right, and it's written to the Hebrews, so you see how strong of a position they think that they have. They think that God waited until the Timothy learned the truth and was able to write his letter to the Hebrews. They think that God waited that long to reveal that you no longer had to keep the commandments because that's what they're teaching this means. So that means everybody in Rome that never got this letter, they never learned this. Yeah. Everybody in Philippi that never got this letter, they never learned this. Everybody that Christ taught, the multitude and the disciples, they didn't even know this. Yeah, no, so he just lied to them and told them to keep the commandments for nothing because because no, really we had to wait for Timothy to come to teach. no. That is not what's happening, man. That's wrong. Go, go back to verse 18. Read it again, please. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 18. For there is a for there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Mm -hmm. For the law made nothing perfect. See, the law made nothing perfect. Huh? The what? The law made nothing perfect. What do you think that means? When they go here, they're asserting that Moses' law did not make you perfect. Hmm? Does the Bible teach that? Go to Job 1 and 1. John, this book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect. Yeah, he was what? Perfect. Why? And upright. Why? Because and he, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. What is the fear of the Lord? To keep, keep the commandments. commandments. He was called perfect for keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. But I thought the law made nothing perfect. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. You can't teach it like that. Right. What it's saying is, 
if you've offended, that law did not allow you to reach perfection. Why? Because certain sins that you committed required you to die. Right. Now that Christ has come, those things which under two or three witnesses you have to be killed for, mm -hmm. you can now repent. Where does scripture say that, Malachi? Say it one more time. Where you cannot be absolved of two or three witnesses under Moses' law, under two or three witnesses you were put to death. Yes. Where's that at? Uh, it's in the law. Show that. No, it's in the New Testament. I want the example, the conversation. That's Hebrews 10. Oh, Hold on, stay where we at. Is it 10 or is it 6? Check 6. See, I don't have my sword. So I'm at a handicap and I'm trying not to Google it. I'm going to find it. Give me one second. If you know the precept, put it in the chat. Under two or three witnesses under Moses' law, a man had to be put to death. Oh, you're talking about Hebrews. I know, yeah. but what oh, verse yeah. do I want? Yeah. Ten, uh, I said 10. What do I want? You want Hebrews 10 and 28. Read that. 29. This book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Come on. How much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God? Come on. And I counted the blood of the covenant. Where with he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. There's your answer. See, under Moses' law, under two or three witnesses, you should die. Right. But now you have the spirit of grace. And where is this taught? Go to Romans 1 and 26. Watch this. Where is this taught? Now, listen, I'm not asserting things. I'm saying the Bible says this, and I've been proving it. The Bible says certain sins which you're supposed to die for you can now repent. And Paul taught this in Romans 1 and 26. Show that. It's the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 26. Go on. For this, ca for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Mm -hmm. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. Burned in their lust one toward another, mm. men with men, come on, working that which is unseemly. Now, Paul is already telling you that that sin of homosexuality is unseemly. We read it in the law that you must be uh, destroyed for doing it. So, why would Paul bring that back up if the ending result is destruction? Go to first Corinthians 6 and show same author. Why would he bring it back up if? You have to die for committing that sin. Okay. Read it. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Listen to, what, listen to my premise. Christ, priesthood, allows you to repent for sins that the Levitical priesthood could not make you perfect from. Under the Levitical priesthood, some of these sins we're about to mention, you have to die. Mm -hmm. So that law doesn't make you perfect. You have to be perfect. However, under the Melchizedek priesthood, under Christ, correct? Under that priesthood, you can repent and be made perfect. You can go forward in perfection. All right, turn your background down. Turn your background down. All right, go ahead. All right, turn your background down. Go ahead. I thought he said Salakia. I think that somebody did say Salakia. All right, I'm going to continue. Uh, got a one, brothers. Um, me and my family members, we all got questions. We look, watch the channel. All right, can you turn the TV down in the background? Can you hear me? Nah. Okay, uh, what's your, yeah, there you go. What's your question? All right, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try this. We're gonna try this one more time. We're gonna try this one more time. We're gonna try this one more time. 
Can you turn your TV down in the background? Now, ask your question, brother. I did, brother. I couldn't hear you because your TV was playing in the background. Uh, can, you, can you show me um, Christ and the Old Testament? Uh, yes. Is that it? Uh, yeah, other questions, but yeah, he want to he want to answer real quick. So. Who's who's he? What what answer do you want? Uh, I'm I'm like the Old Testament, New Testament brother. I'm just trying to listen and stuff, but I do got questions like. Um, uh, let me think. Well, wait, don't make up a question. I'm in the middle of demonstrating something. It's not even time for questions. I thought you was asking pertaining to what I'm saying right now. Okay, I'll, then I'll, I'll just wait there. I'll wait towards the end. I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So the point I was making is there are certain laws under the Mosaic law that you cannot repent for. You must die. But under Christ, you can repent of these things and be made perfect. That's what the writer in Hebrews is teaching. That's what my premise is. Now we're about to read that. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Wait, if you're if you if you're an idolater, what's the penalty? Yeah. If you're an adulterer, what's the penalty? Yeah. Yeah. Read on. Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Translated as a sodomite. What's the penalty? Yeah. Yeah. Read on. Nor thieves. Come on. Nor covetous. Come on. Nor drunkards. Come on. Nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So now these people cannot make it to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I'll admit, under the Moses' law, you can restore and then you can be made whole again. In your status but many of those you must be put to death right. so what shall we say then how can you repent for something that the law requires you to be put to death for yeah. you can't you read on verse 11 and such were some of you but ye are washed what but ye are washed come on but ye are sanctified come on but ye are justified how in the name of the lord yahweh with whose cosign and by the spirit of our god see that that's what the writer in hebrews is teaching you that levitical priesthood requires levi to remain priest mm -hmm. right. but then that blocks christ from coming in so that many can be saved. However, the law foresaw that and told you there was going to be someone to come who you should listen to, like your brethren. Which would answer the question that was just asked. Which would ask, show me Christ in the Old Testament. We, we actually did that before you asked the question. It is your brother, like unto your brethren, like me. Moses said he's going to be like unto me, and him shall you hear. You have to understand that. Right. But the, the author of Hebrews knows this right. and his conversation is not written to Joe Schmo no. at old Mount Zion Epis Episcopalian Baptist Church, man. <laughs> Go ahead. It's the book of Romans <clears throat> chapter 7 and verse 1. Big fruit fly, man. I don't like them. And it reads, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Say it again. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. He's talking to the leaders of the churches. Right. When he wrote to Galatia, that was not to Jimmy, who don't know the, his head from his tail, but he just loved the Lord. No, it was written to the leaders. When he wrote Philippians to the Philippians literally says to the elders. Go to that Philippians 1 and 1. Philippians 1 and 1. Damn, these things are vicious, man. It's the book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. 
Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Yahweh Shai and Mashiach, to all the saints in Yahweh Shai, which are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. It's not written to Jimmy John, man. It's written to uh, the people who are able to handle and gather this level of instruction. Mm. So when we're looking at Hebrews, if you don't know the law, why are you reading Hebrews? If you don't know the law, statutes, and commandments, why are you reading Hebrews? If you don't know the law, statutes, and commandments, why are you in Galatians? And that's very important for us to understand. Okay. Um, they 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 invading the chat. Yeah. You know, with like wickedness. Can What's, you still see that in there? I, I try to block it. Can you still see it? Okay, it's deleted. Now, let's go back to Hebrews 7 because we're still there. Verse 19. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 19. Come on. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God. Mm. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest. Come on. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, Come on, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And by so much was Yahweh made a surety of a better testament. And, and we can read the whole chapter, which continues to make this point. Right. The carnal commandment was only Levi can be the priest, the unprofitable commandment. The weak commandment was that your priests are Levites only, okay? Your you, The thing that was disannulled was only Levi can do this work so that Judah can come in under Christ and his sacrifice and make millions and millions perfect who could not be made perfect otherwise. With that understanding, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 again. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In verse 9, and, yeah. and it reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. Be not deceived, neither... Don't, don't get it twisted. You're not going to make it. Read. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to make it. Paul just said that. Yeah. He just said this. You're not going to make it. What makes being an abuser of yourself with mankind wrong? The law said you can't do it. What makes being an adulterer wrong? The law said you can't do it. What makes charging your brother usury wrong? What makes you an extortioner? The law said you can't do that. Right. And that's crazy because... You can charge usury to the heathen, right. but you can't charge usury to your brother. But Paul said an extortioner can't get the kingdom of God. Well, the only extortion he's acknowledging is that of your own people. Exactly. Oof, yeah. it's getting bad. Read on. In Hebrews, I mean, yep. I'm sorry, in 1 Corinthians? Yes. Verse uh, 11. 11. And such were some of you. So Paul is saying people who I'm teaching this to in this audience some of you was effeminate. Some of you was sodomite. Some of you was adulterous. Some of you was murderers. Come on. But you are washed. But you're washed. How? But you are sanctified. Come on. But you are justified in the name of our Lord, Hamashiach, Yahweh and by the spirit of our God. See? So this new priest that came in is a better testament because those laws under the Levitical priesthood condemn some, but the new priesthood justifies them and therefore they can attain perfection do you know the author of hebrews believe that go to hebrews 6 and 1 i believe that's let us move on towards profession perfection to hebrews yeah. chapter 6 and verse 1 watch this therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ now that you've learned about this new priest let us go on into perfection i thought see now, now wait when the when the writer of hebrews said that law can't make you perfect mm -hmm. They meant to say the Old Testament law is wicked and you can't be made perfect by that. But they won't say that because we show you in the scriptures where people are deemed perfect 
because they keep the laws. Right. Christ said in Matthew 5 and 48, be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Some rebuttals I heard for that is it means mature. Listen, mature why? What what what's the point of being mature? You right. stop doing certain things. Right. Dummy. Be mature even as your father in heaven is, is mature. mature. Come on, man. Read for, uh Hebrews 6 and 1 again. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, yeah. let us go on unto perfection. Not doing what? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Not repeating acts that I have to repent for. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to increase in faith and I'm going to keep the commandments. Because if I'm not doing things that require repentance, what am I doing? I'm keeping the commandments. The only thing that you have to repent from is what? Sin. What is sin? Sin. sin? Prove it, prove it. Okay. Book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. What are we talking about? Why are we arguing anymore? When are we going to stop saying Hebrew Israelites hate everybody and say, yo, these dudes want their people to clean up their act? These brothers are in the street, young and old, different ages, teaching their people to clean up their behavior. Right. Why am I mad? Because a brother is saying, stop eating pork. It's an right. unclean animal to God. Why am I trying to make it okay to eat that filthy animal? Why am I mad? Brothers say, brothers say stop being a sodomite in Atlanta. Why am I mad? No one needs to be a part of that lifestyle. You need to change. It's a death style, not a lifestyle. I'm not making that up. That's what God said. This is the land of the free one nation under God. Oops, time out. Right. Hypocrites. You didn't let us free while saying that. Mm -hmm. And number two, the God that you're talking about is the God of this Bible, the King James Bible. That's right. what you swore in on with the Apocrypha, right. John McCain. Uh -huh. So that God don't believe in sodomy. Right. Not even in the New Testament. Right. So what are we doing? So y'all are arguing with yourselves and not us. Y'all are actually in an echo chamber. When we in the street teaching you, you're frustrated because you say we condescended. You're frustrated because you say we belittle the people when we teach them. And there's a difference between belittling somebody and knowing where you're going. Right. 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 If your child gets in the car and says, I do not want to wear a seatbelt. And here's why. Stop. Put your seatbelt on. Right. Right. I don't want to wear a seatbelt because, look, yo, listen, if we go down this street and we get into an accident, you're going to fly through the damn windshield. Put the seatbelt on. You don't listen to me. You're not trying to hear me. I don't need to hear you out right. because I know <laughs> where you're going. Right. And it doesn't work. That's what you're doing. When you're trying to make it okay for y'all to sin. Right. And we already know in the Old and New Testament, thou canst do that. So now we know where you're going. So we're stopping you before you even waste time. And if you really thought about it for a second, you came to us. So right. if, if you thought about it for one second, you'd be like, what's he saying here? Right. And we don't get that a lot. So what did y'all learn in this lesson? People need to state a premise. Here's my premise. You have to keep the commandments and the faith in Christ to be in the kingdom. See how I did that? Now, does the Bible say that? Yes. Revelation 14 and 12. Watch this. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Come on. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So what I just said was in the Bible. My premise was written. Here's what you're saying. I can go to heaven and I don't have to keep the Mosaic law. Huh? Re Revelation 22, 14. Where did you read that? Where can I see that written? Yeah, I can't find that. You can assert that things mean that just like you did with Hebrews 7. But when we read it, it's not saying that. Right. It's just, look, it's just not. Stop. Stop. Y'all will all don't think. He, first of all, very few people say that I'm. I've heard that lately. Like, yo, you talk down to people when you teach them. You condescend it. But I only heard it from certain people. A lot of people tell me I have patience, and I'm very loving. So maybe it's just how you feel about me at the time. But I'm gonna say this: I will even work on that. 
to be even more gentle because my goal in the street is not to prove that I know the scriptures because I don't know all the scriptures. It's to prove that the Bible is telling us to clean up our act. Right. And I can show you that on the paper. And if that helps you and your family, I've done my job. Right. That's the only reason I'm outside. Uh, Revelation 22, 14. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 14. What the Lord said. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. What are we talking about? And may enter in through the gates into the city. So that's the kingdom of God. So I just told you that you have to keep the commandments to enter into the city, uh, into the kingdom of God. And we just read that. Right. Why are we fighting and arguing for? I'm waiting for you to show me a scripture that say, I don't have to keep God's laws because Christ came. Say that. Right. Say, mm -hmm. like, stop asserting it. You feel me? Yeah. Right. Say that. Say, I don't have to keep God's laws anymore. I don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore. Show me that. I don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore. You know what they're going to do? They're going to take you a scripture that says new moons and Sabbaths. Yeah. These are a shadow of things to come. Mm -hmm. Did that verse say, I do not have to keep the Sabbath? Uh, they're going to take it to a verse that says Sabbath was made for man. Okay. Does that verse say I don't have to keep the Sabbath? Uh, this is who we arguing with. This who I, this is who we this who's been teaching our people while we was smoking weed, right. standing on street corners, slap boxing in on in front of the bodega, right. um wearing shiny suits, being Jehovah Witnesses. Um some of our brothers got on white shirts with pocket squares, they damn Mormons. How you become a Mormon? They don't like you. Uh, Bow tie and sell bean pies. Brother's been doing that with, with kufis on. Brothers, knowledge, brother, knowledge, God, brother. Oh, God. See the God in you, brother. Read the Quran, huh? I can recite a, 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 a passage, but I don't know what that book say. Right. right? What we're telling you in these last days is those guys have been your spiritual instructors and they meant well. well look, see? And they meant well. But in these last days, you have young brothers older brothers, even even intermediate brothers who have been studying this word, man. And we could tear down all strongholds now. That's right. This is no longer the white man's book because it never was. All right. It foretells his judgment. What's crazy is you'll find out that he doesn't read this book. Right. He's doing the same thing you're doing. A certain thing. Uh, get your precept. Go ahead. Look at Psalms chapter 18 verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Mm -hmm. so, so the Most High's word is perfect and it's always mm -hmm. been tried. And it's never, it's never bent, it's never folded. Right? This is the only, this is the only book that has ever been tested and lasted throughout the times. That's right. He said, "Don't forget the polo shirt with necktie, guys." <laughs> wow. Yo, JT's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, brother Mike. He hates us. Yo, but hey. It is what it is, man. This man got on a polo man. with a necktie and <laughs> swore we didn't know the scriptures, man. We're yeah. like, bro, you don't know how to dress. What are you wearing? Why do you have a that shirt was not made to have a tie? Mm -hmm. Um so like, go ahead. did you bring out Psalm 19 7? Uh no. This book of Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is I perfect. Law, converting the soul. Yeah, the, yeah. the testimony of the Lord yeah. is sure, making wise and simple. So, then you make so the law is perfect. Yeah. Uh, it literally just said right here, the law of the Lord is perfect. So why is it perfect? Because it converts you. It converts you to be a better man, be a better woman, to be a better follower of Christ, man. Because that's what Christ came to Talk teach louder. was the law. So like, that's what Christ came to teach was the law. And why was Christ perfect? Because he kept the law perfectly and endured until the end. Oh, God. Oh. So that's what made every man and woman that was Call perfect in the scriptures perfect was yes, their perfection in the law. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all brothers, build for a second. Me and Malachi are looking up something. What verse is that? 30, 36 and 2? Uh, I think it's Luke. Other people were blameless, yeah, right? Uh, go to Luke uh, chapter 3. I've never seen that before. Mm. Luke chapter 3. Uh, it's like Luke chapter 1. Shh. Shagaya. Shagaya. God. Verse 5. One five. Okay, Luke chapter 1, verse 5. It says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah, and of the course of Abiah. Oh. 
Shigai. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Oh, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments right. and ordinances of the Lord blameless. The and they were worthy of mention what? to be called blameless and, and uh, walking in all the commandments Jesus. of the Lord. Appreciate it. Right? That's what made oh, them perfect, Shigai. was their full assurance and faith walking after it's the law, such commandments of the Most High, with all their heart, with all their uh, soul, mm. right? with all their strength. And that's in the commandments. So the law is always taught. Those things that Christ taught, which was to follow the laws of the Most High God with with full willingness. Now right? let's let's get the example of Christ being this priest. Go to John chapter eight, and then we're gonna stop there and take questions. Go to John chapter eight and show you Christ being a priest after the order of Melchizedek and and absolving you of sin, which you're really supposed to be put to death for. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, verse one. The book of John chapter 8 and verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground and as though he heard them not. He wasn't trying to deal with it because he knew that they were scoffing. Read on. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at him. Mm -hmm. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Come on. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience, mm -hmm. went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, mm. and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Read. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? Has no man decided to put you to death? Read. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and then move on towards perfection. Go and sin no more. Go and move on towards perfection. So the Levitical priesthood cannot make you perfect if you have already offended in it, especially in this case of adultery. You have to die. There is no chance of redemption. Right. That's weak. The strength of the law is sin. Uh, the, the strength of... Uh, the sting of sin is death, but the strength of sin is the law. Right. Am I right? That's right. So the power of sin is in the law. You can die. Mm -hmm. But now that Christ is here, you can be absolved of these things. That's yeah. all that's being taught right. in the change in the law. That doesn't mean stop keeping the Sabbath because that's a sin. If you don't keep the Sabbath, you're sinning. Mm -hmm. How can you be absolved of sin while sinning? And guess what? Paul taught you this. Galatians 2. Why is everybody an expert on Galatians 3? Where is your Galatians 1 and 2 breakdowns? Where you at, player? Go to Galatians 2. And uh, 15. Look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh, 16. Verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. You will be brought here for people telling you that you, here's what they mean. You do not have to keep the laws anymore. That's what they mean. Did that say that? Uh, what did it say? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So because I'm not justified by it, I don't have to do it. Is uh, that your premise? Get them to confess. Right. And some of them will be so arrogant they will. They will say, yeah, that's the point. Okay, read this. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. See, we don't got to do that law. We just got to have faith in Christ. Is that what this is teaching? Is that your premise? That we don't have to do the law anymore? Just have faith in Christ? Because of this? Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep reading this. Go ahead. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Well, And not by the works of the law. See, we justified by the faith in Christ and not by the works of that. Oh, they put that. They, they put that. Oh, that. Oh, 
Oh, Lord. Can I get a witness? And then they and then they think they dancing on me. Right, right. So you have to keep your composure. Keep the stale face. Because the author's going to explain himself. Mm -hmm. Read on. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Are found what? Are found sinners. Are found what? Sinners. If you seek to be justified by Christ, but while seeking that, you are found to be a sinner. What does it mean to be a sinner, guys? Transgress the, the laws of God. We're in a lot of trouble. Read on. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So while you seek to be justified by Christ, you can't be found in sin. And this is Christ's doctrine. Mm -hmm. Go and sin, sin no more. more. Y'all can't deal. Y'all can't deal. Y'all can't deal. Y'all can't deal. All right. So the, the tonight's lesson was to show you how to handle a change in the law. Right. We gave you the perspective, how to look at it. We also told you the challenges you might face when having this discussion. And we hope that we gave you some armor so that you could go and um, uh, maybe uh, bring someone over to the uh, Man, right side of the Lord. Why they block me? But he kept typing nonsense. I did that. All right. So hopefully you can convince many and exhort them. But I'm going to tell you this. Don't be handling this Bible like a novice. Right. You know the truth. You know, you know, I'm not really studying like that. See how I said it? Yeah, I'm not really studying. Watch me say this. I'm going to admit the Clubhouse app saved me from my weak study habits. I got to a point where my hands were so full with the camp that I and work that I stopped studying like I did in the beginning. In the beginning, I would be up till three in the morning watching videos, camp videos, precepting my Bible. And then my Bible got a lot of precepts in it and it got to a point where it was a useful sword and I slowed down. And I started editing videos and I might watch TV tonight. I might, I might watch a video while I'm at work if I could, mm -hmm. listen to it in the headphones. And my mm -hmm. I might listen to a chapter on the way to work in the car with the audio book. I might whew, my study habits, but that that late night, midnight by candlelight, getting precepts and searching things out, I fell back. Look, look at me admitting that, right? So the Clubhouse app forced me to get my blade back sharp because of the instant feedback. It's like being at camp all day, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for that application that I can use it for that purpose. But that still don't change the fact that I got to get back to my first love, sit down, open my Bible. It say this in John. The equivalent scripture is in Matthew. It says this in Ezekiel. Isaiah taught the same thing. And I start linking it up. I got to get back to that. I'm telling y'all. So y'all know that y'all need to study if you're not studying at all. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't be trying to take my lessons, Malachi's lessons, and then you you at the barbershop. Yeah, but see, the Lord ain't say that. See, <laughs> see when you go to Hebrew, because you're going to get hit with yeah. a scarf that you do not know how to read. Yeah. Brother... The laws and the ordinances that were contrary to us were nailed to the cross. Ooh, what you going to say? If you've never heard that before, you don't even know how to deal with that. So just take your time. I, I advise you to join a body. I don't care who, as long as they believe in Christ, I advise you to join a body and be held accountable and keep the commandments with your brothers and sisters. Everybody understand? Uh, Everybody understand on the call? Uh, don't know the one. All right, so we're gonna take a we're gonna take a we're gonna take a couple questions and it's getting hot up here. We're gonna take a couple questions and we're gonna shut it down. So um the the call you have precedence. If you're on the call, your questions are always gonna be first, and if the YouTube will be second. So the floor is open. Is that brother that was uh in the middle of the class asking questions still on with his family? I heard somebody hang up. You think that was him? I'm not sure. Well, if not, we're not going to wait. Is there anybody else that has any questions? I like it. Go ahead. Hey, Shalom. This is Toja Nayan. Shalom, um, my question is in... Shalom, Shalom. My question is in Ezra 1 and 5. 
where it says, uh, why does it say, um, and the priests and the Levites? Do you want me to read it? No, no, no. We have readers. For the YouTube, we got to read over here. You said Ezra 1 and 5? Gone out of 1. Read that. And it reads, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. Did he say Esdras? Ezra. Oh, Ezra. Oh, I'm reading it. But Ezra. it's crazy because Levites is in Ezra 1 and 5. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I was like, yo, what translation are you reading? Is that what you wanted, brother? Con out of one. So what's your question about know. that? My question, my, my question is, why does it say and the priests and the Levites? I thought the Levites were priests. Sometimes um, the king's English becomes verbose and they reiterate. All, all Levites are yeah. priests. All Levites are priests. All right. You know what I'm saying all, the, all of the Levites weren't priests. It was, not every Levite was a priest. But all Levites are priests because we are a nation of priests and kings. Yeah, I'm just. I, I, I guess it was just for this part. Say it again. Make make it make it. Plain. No, I was saying that all all the Levites. Yes, we are a nation of of, of kings and priests because what you just taught. You know, the priesthood has has been changed to. A tribe has not been or ha has not been at the altar, but during, I guess, this time before the priesthood would change, all the Levites weren't called to be priests. Mm. So you had to qualify to be a priest and to serve in, uh, before the altar. It was uh, certain things like you had to be without a uh, certain type of uh, defor de uh, deformities and different things like that, which are found in Leviticus. So not everyone who was of the tribe of Levi was fit to be a priest. Yeah, like uh, uh, what's it called? Sons uh, uh, in he, First Samuel. Eli. Uh, Eli. Eli's yeah, sons. Eli's son. they, were, they, were, they were they were just wicked. Yeah, they was wicked as hell. And even uh, oh no. Con, you understand a lot? Count out one. Yeah, priest was in the office. Um, I have another question also. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, my uh, my second question is in Ezra chapter two and verse two, where it talks about the governors. And it reads that came with uh, the, like Ezra chapter two and verse two, which came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Realiah. Mordecai, Bilshan, Mizpar, Bigvi, Rehum, Baana, the number of the men of the people of Israel. So my question is, is the is this Mordecai that's mentioned in Ezra 2 and verse 2? Is this the uncle of Esther that's written in the book of Esther? Mm. I don't think so. I'm not exactly sure. Read it again. Because this is Ezra chapter two time. is is them coming out of Babylon with, with Artaxerxes. Yeah, uh, no, and uh, Esther is with Artaxerxes. Yeah, that's the Medo Persian, right? But this is Babylon. Yeah, in the in the uh, in Esther, they were under the rule under the captivity of Elam, and but even here, this is after Babylon was taken down, and Cyrus is king. Mm -hmm. And this is this is when es Ezra chapter two is when is what brothers use to say that Ezra fulfilled Isaiah four and one. Right. I mean fourteen and one. Yeah, we dealt with that with the Jehovah Witness brother. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to really get into. He didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, but this, this is this, different this is a period. different time period, though. I... Count out of one. Count. Count with the water. And the bar. All right, we taking all questions from the call before we get to the YouTube. If there's no more questions on the call, then we can go to the YouTube. Give the uh, yeah, give the YouTube a chance. All right, go ahead. Come on, I don't want to show you what's up. I got a question about um, 
you know, as we we, we try to, uh, you know, uh, reach for perfection and, you know, keeping the holy days or whatnot, right? I was wondering, like, in the terms of being clean or unclean, right, how do we identify, um, like, a leprosy in somebody? Or, or, <laughs> You got background noise, Doc. That's not you? Uh, do a mic check. Oh, okay, that's me now. But uh, you want me to repeat the question? Yeah, because some children started talking. So I said, in like you know, in uh, you know, in a quest for perfection, like in you know, being clean for the holy days, right? How do we like identify um, things like leprosy? You so know, that you know, that a cheap, uh, you know, so lep from coming to leprosy. Leprosy, if a if a brother is a complete albino, he's a clean leper. Um, when. Or, but if a brother has like blotches in his skin or his beard, say it again. What'd you say? Talk. Yes. I don't oh, think I'm saying it. if it's yeah. the biggest 1330. Basically, if it, if it continues to form or spread, continues to progress, uh, then you know that that is a forming blotch and he's unclean. But again, that law would be contrary to you being right. put out of the camp. Grace in Christ, that brother would not be subject to that law because we're not going to do the rights to make him clean either. Watch, read it. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall see the plague mm -hmm. and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin Come on. and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull. Even a leprosy upon the head or, or beard. Now here's the judgment, read. And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, and behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague of the skull seven days. So if a brother breaks out with a new case of what biblically leprosy, it would be reasonable to tell him to stay away from the camp for seven days and, and, and attend to that and look to that. But if he's had it his whole life, then it is what it is. Keep reading. And in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the plague and behold, if the skull spread not and there be in it no yellow hair mm -hmm. and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin, mm -hmm. he shall be shaven. But the skull shall he not shave. And the priest shall shut up him that hath the skull seven days more. Now, the priest that's doing this would be the Levitical priest. But we just read that that Levitical priesthood has been moved to the order of Melchizedek. And underneath Christ, we would not have to shave the brother's head and do all these things to him. All right. He would he, he would be made clean, being washed through the blood of Christ, his uncleanness would be removed from him, right? This would be the same thing with a brother who is wounded in his stones. According to the Bible, a brother like that cannot enter into the congregation. But in Christ, even the eunuch shall rejoice. You understand that? That's a very technical question. Interesting. Uh, next person. Go ahead. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Adawan, and all the other Hakim. Uh, we on. had a question a couple. Shalakia. So yeah, we had a question a couple of weeks back, and I wanted to bring it back up because I wanted to see how you would handle this. Uh, so it's the Book of Acts, chapter thirteen and forty-seven, and the challenge was Paul is quoting from Isaiah, speaking of the Gentiles, and so he's saying that since Paul is speaking of the Gentiles in this verse, this will prove that Isaiah and Paul are both teaching salvation for the Gentiles. So I had, I had a response to that, and I know that's not what he's teaching, but I, I think it's a smoother way to break it down. So that's what I'm asking for. Well, again, the Gentiles that Paul is sent to are among the true Gentiles. 
We have to be mature about this. When we're teaching in Woodruff Park, we're teaching all nations. But who is our message for? Israel. But does that stop Moab from sometimes stopping and going, mm. See, so we, deal, we deal with, yeah. dealt with that today. We yeah. had a, a woman, a Bosnian woman that sat there and literally listened to us teach the whole time until she had to go. Because even, even when she said, I have to use the bathroom, am I going to leave? She stayed even longer and, and, and listened. Yeah. Because your message was upright. We have to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. I'm not talking to Yonatan. I'm talking to people who think that they can find a way to bring the heathen in this. We have to yeah. stop doing something. The Bible that we're teaching says things. So if we're teaching all nations, that means I have to teach all nations things that the Bible says. And the Bible pronounces judgments for the nations. Right. So that means I have to go into the nation of Canaan and read to them their judgment. Yep. I have to go to Edomites and read to them their judgment. I have to go to Moab and read Moab is my wash pot. Yeah, right. Because I have to go to all nations and teach the Bible. So if the nationalities cease to exist, Moab is standing next to Moab and you're telling me you're going to pick which Moabite becomes a spiritual Israelite? There's no such doctrine. So we have to stop saying because we see a scripture of Gentiles here in the word that they now become Israelites and get what Israel is supposed to get. Because that's what you mean. Do you see what I'm saying, Jonathan? That's what they mean, brother. That's the, that's the that spiritual Israelite doctrine is a form of them like, damn, I'm reading in these scriptures. And I see it too. And Israel is the only people that can be saved. So now I have to say, they're basically saying, we agree, only Israel is going to be saved, but now we're going to make them Israel. You're right. Don't, don't spam the chat on the YouTube. Stop doing that. You write the comment once, that's enough. You got brothers writing the same comment 15 times. Why are you doing that? You think about it for a second. You're in your house typing on your computer the same comment 15 times. Why are you doing that? Just think about it for a second. All right, so you, you completed your thought? Mm -hmm. So now, that means I have to teach all nations that God's plan is this. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Uh, book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe it to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. I'm in a nation that's not an Israel, uh, Israelite nation. Well, well, I'm in a nation that is not Israelites. I have to teach them that. God's plan is for the Israelites to rule over y'all. Right. So it is no problem with the Gentiles here in the word. It's just, are you teaching them what the Bible says? Right. We got to stop. So it is no problem with the Gentiles here in the word. If you, if you call into the class, please mute your, uh, uh, your phones, please. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Brooks, I had to mute you because you have the video playing in the background. I'm going to unmute you because I think you turned that down. I'm trying to turn this thing down. There you go. Okay, it's muted. Okay, so now that's the reality of the situation. We have to be real about that. Christ said, if your brother will not hear you or the church, treat him like a heathen. So I have to go amongst heathens and teach them that. Right. And they have to accept it to be a proper Christian. That's right. I have to go and teach that the Canaanite woman, I have to go in the land of Canaan and say the most Christ uh, taught that you was a dog. Right. He talked to you like that. You're still going to follow? Well, great is your faith. Anyway, moving on. Right. right? Right. But what y'all mean by that is when the Gentiles hear the word, they acquire the salvation that was given to Israel. That's what you mean. Yeah. And I want you to say that and stop asserting things. All right. You you arguing with pieces of the doctrine and then you want to build on it. What about Rahab? Rahab betrayed all of her people so that they could be slaughtered all right. so that she could be spared. Right. But what you mean by that is Rahab is mentioned in the Bible. And the, the author of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews mentioned her. So that means she's going to get the same salvation. It does it say that if Rahab was fine to betray her people to be destroyed, 
murdered. So Israel could take that place and they could be in power. That means she's probably going to be fine to serve in the life to come. Right. right. So why not mention her? Right. But y'all don't think about it like that. The Israelites is going to be the top nation. That's it. That's the Bible. They're going to rule with a rod of iron because they are the rod of the Lord's inheritance pursuant to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 16. If I'm not mistaken, let me check that. Out. That's right. OK, so so let's um, let's stop playing games with things that the New Testament alludes to. All the Gentiles in the New Testament are not Israelites, but they're also not all heathens. Right. And the Gentiles that are rejoicing, think for a second. Israel's going to rejoice when they hear the doctrine of the Bible. Our nation has a savior. He's going to lift us up and put Israel back in the power seat, and we're going to rule forevermore. Israelites will rejoice to hear that. Is Esau going to rejoice to hear that he's the end of the world and Jacob is the next thereof? Wow. Especially when he knows he's an Edomite. His family taught him he's from the seed of Edom. He's a proud Edomite. Think about it. I don't know. Um, does that answer your question, Jonathan? Kind of a lot. The water. Kind of. All right. Uh, next question on the call. Hello? Going once? Dallas. Okay, what's your question? Yes, sir. Shalom, Israel. Shalom. I had an old Shalom. question. I wanted to have, get some clarification on an old topic uh, regarding the thou should not abhor an Edomite. Okay. Be before what was taught that I heard uh, from watching the, um, the camps was that there was an error in the translation and that it actually meant Syrian instead of Edomite. And it changed to mean that, well, a, not to abhor an Edomite doesn't mean that uh, we're supposed to um, acknowledge the Edomites or accept the Edomites. It just means that we're not supposed to abhor them or not treat them bad, but we're still not supposed to accept them. So which is it? Um, let's first do the language study. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Now, do you see how the blue letter renders it? Um, how Bible Hub renders it? Mm -hmm. They have that word there. Right? Um, I think the brothers get that breakdown from blue letter. Might be. Let's go there. Hold on one second. We're going to share our screen. Yes, sir. They have it too. Let's um, click on it. That is a choice. But that, I would rather one of those brothers that kicked that doctrine explain his position. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to share my screen. What does um, the uh, lexicon say? I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when y'all can see my screen. Oh my God, it's still wrong. I don't want to do that. All right, we're going to have to speak it, okay? Okay. Um, the word is coming from H130, which is Adomi, which is a descendant of Edom. Whoa, which is a descendant of Edom. However, it is translated as a Syrian in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 16 and 6, according to the blue letter. But it is naturally used as a descendant of Edom. And uh that doesn't change that doesn't change the theology. I think the brothers that teach that it's really a clerical error, they have reasons for that, but we actually teach it to be Edom and deal with it even if it's thus. We we will mention that brothers have found it to be a clerical error. However, it doesn't change the theology. To abhor an Edomite has been brought up so many times. Right. And the position is this. You're actually going against the commandments 
to uh, dislike them. That's what they mean. But that's 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 not correct. And if you will walk with me, I'll show you that. Go to Psalms eighty-three and one, and let's make an next. Let's let's make a very simple point. It's the book of Psalms, chapter eighty-three and verse one. Keep not thou silence, O God. Mm -hmm. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Mm -hmm. For lo, thine enemies have. That enemies make a tumult. So right now we are talking about the enemies of God. We are about to list them. It's going to get so descriptive. We're going to list the enemies of God. Read on. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And these people not only are the enemies of God, they hate God. And they become powerful. Read on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted, consulted against thy hidden ones. And they are against the nation of Israel. Come on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And have most likely partly succeeded. In these last days, you'll find a Christian that has no idea about the importance of the Israelites, but he believes in Jesus. You ask him, what nationality is Jesus? Jewish? What? No, he's an Israelite. Is he? It's, it says that? Like so he's Middle Eastern. They they have actually partly succeeded in their world religions to have taken the emphasis off of God's prophecy and promises to his chosen people and given it to mm -hmm. everyone. So now it doesn't even matter if you're an Israelite or not. So no one teaches about the Israelites. So the name of Israel is almost no more in remembrance. Mm -hmm. They basically almost succeeded. We're actually trying to counter that. Yeah. Read on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are confederate, these other nations. Come on. The tabernacles of Edom. And the first name in the list of the enemies of God, the people who hate God. Give me Psalms 139 and 21. Mm -hmm. The people that hate God that are trying to block the Israelites from even knowing who they are in these last days, the number one culprit is Edom. So here comes someone with a parachute and a, med a medical kit, a first aid kit, trying to heal Esau, yeah. saying, yo, you can't hate this guy. Your law says you can't abhor him. Read it. One, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 21. Come on. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not, Salaki, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? What was Edom described as? Someone who rose up against Those them. that hate him and lifted up their head against him. Yeah. An enemy of God. Well, David is described as a man after the Lord's own heart. And he says he hates those who hate God. Right. Salaki. We can also add on the fact that literally two chapters later, from Deuteronomy 23 in, in chapter 25, the Amalekites, which is a, uh, a descendant of Esau. of Esau, were the first yeah. ones to, to come up against us. And the Most High commanded us not to forget what they did. <laughs> Read that. Uh, this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25. And what is it? Verse 17. I'll start at 16. For all that do such things... And all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. I mm. didn't need that, but that was a good verse. That's a great point. Verse 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of Egypt. How he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee when thou was faint and weary and he feared not God. Mm. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies, literally two chapters later. Yes. Round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, mm. and thou shalt not forget it. Mm. Now that's a problem. Mm -hmm. right. But it gets worse, <laughs> Esau. You thought you was going to get away? Oh, you can't get away. Ezekiel 25 and 14. See, what they're saying is stop reading the judgment yeah. for the so-called white man 
and calling him the Edomite. Yeah. Right. So to protect him, you are not allowed to dislike the Edomites, right. Right. which means you have to love the white men. Yeah. That is their premise. Yeah. They're not going to say that, but that's what they're trying to do. So we just showed you, first of all, I hate them with a perfect hatred because they hate God. Right. So the Edomites, I can gotcha. I, I hate them. What Chris is reading to gotcha. uh, Slaki what Malachi, Captain Malachi is reading for you is hold on. Amalek, a child of Edom, tried to destroy us. It was petty doing it. Mm -hmm. And God said, Don't forget what they did and paid them back. And we're gonna, we gonna block them out from all uh, from under all of heaven. It's in the Bible. So now am I wicked for teaching the Bible? Ezekiel 25 and 14. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 25 and verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. By who? By the hand of my people Israel. The Bible literally says Edom is going to get judged by God, but he's going to use Israel to do it. Am I wicked for teaching that? Uh, Read on. And they shall do an Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. <clears throat> So what are we gonna do with that? Hold on. What what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about that? I to to keep Deuteronomy twenty three and seven the way that you understand it. I can't read Ezekiel twenty five and fourteen. Or I can't remember what Amalek did. Or I have to stop and cease from remembering what Amalek did in the way Paul didn't even forget that. Right. Paul reminded you, Jacob have I love, Esau have I hate. Right. He didn't teach that to Agrippa though. When he was standing in right. front of Agrippa, he didn't say that. Sure, yeah. But you're trying to use what he said in front of Agrippa against him when Paul is trying to save his own life. That's right. You guys are sip, yo. Your paper thin yeah. doctrines. Yeah. Your doctrines are weak. We could poke a hole through it with our pinky finger, man. Yeah. Read that in Obadiah 1 and 18. I know you got it. It's the book of Obadiah, verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, mm. and the house of Esau for stubble. Mm. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. I can't teach that. <laughs> I can't teach that. I, I never knew who Edomites were yeah. for like 30 some odd years of my life, bro. Because right. the church ain't teach me that. No. Right. So now that I found out, I can't read what the Bible actually, I never read the book of Obadiah for nothing. Right. Well, guess what? Obadiah had a prophecy and he says something, right? And the prophets verify Obadiah. Right. So now what? Right. So to keep Deuteronomy 23, I have to stop teaching Obadiah? When Christ taught Obadiah, I am led to believe in his lifetime because he taught the law and the prophets. Right. Paul taught Obadiah, I'm right. led to believe. Because he said nothing else than what the law and the prophets said should come. And they shouldn't it come a day where J uh, Ephraim and Judah come together? Yeah. So what are we talking about? So now your, your premise don't work. I'm actually just teaching what the scriptures say that's going to happen to Edom. Right. And you're right. trying to tell me to stop doing that yeah. using Deuteronomy 23 and 7. You're wrong again. Right. Go to um, Habakkuk 2 and 4. Mm. This book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and verse 4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And, and whose soul is not upright in him? Who is the border of wickedness? Read verse 12. Go ahead. Verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. Now, who the hell did that? Esau. You know? And it's saying, it, Obadiah is calling for destruction on them. Now, I'm wait a sorry, not Obadiah. Hab Habakkuk. He said, Woe unto those people that do that. Right. And Isaiah said, They may not rise and fill the face of the earth with cities, slaughter them. Right. I can't teach what the prophets said about their prime enemy in the Bible. Did you know, as important as Israel is, their no enemy number one is Edom? Right. You think it's by design? You don't know that? It's, of course, because Edomites bringing you the doctrine, they used it. In a fantastic way to control the whole earth. They taught you that Jesus is love while slaughtering you. They taught you that God was white. All the prophets was white. Making you reverence them in your mind while killing you and raping little boys. 
and the Catholic Church, right. the Catholic Church dominated the earth. But this scripture said, behold, his soul is not upright within him. Now go to Proverbs 29, 27. Go to Proverbs 29, 27. And, 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 and read that. Book of Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 27. And it reads, an unjust man is an abomination to the judge. Hold on, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. An unjust man is an abomination to the uh, to the just. But the just live by faith, and those are Israelites. And then the unjust man is an abomination to them. Esau's soul is not upright within him. He's unjust. Right. So he's an abomination to me. Right. Yeah. But you're trying to tell me that I what you mean to say is. You have to love Esau because you can't abhor him. Yeah. But the Bible says the unjust man is an abomination to the just. Read on. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. And he hates us because our ways upbraid him with our keeping of the law. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. Got to understand that. David put garrisons in Edom. That's prisons, strongholds. We was actually policing them like they police our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. We was walking around eating like, yeah, wild and come here, come here, come here. Mm -hmm. Go stand in there. Sit down. Think about what you've been doing. You're acting like a buffoon out here. We had garrisons in right. Egypt, man. All right. So the thing about it is, the thing that's happening is people are using that scripture to make a point without yeah. saying what their point is. Thou shalt not have point. Gotcha. Thou shalt not shall not abhor an Edomite. That's that's fine. I'm not. I, I'm fine, right? Like it's it's not that deep. The word for abhor, right? It literally means to abhor or or abhorrent to detest. But the Bible just said the unjust is detestable mm -hmm. to the just. Mm -hmm. So obviously Esau did something so that Deuteronomy twenty three and seven. He made it so that that can't help him. Right. The Egyptian did something so that Deuteronomy 23 and 7 through 8, they made it so that it, it can't help them because they needed that to help them because mm -hmm. we was coming into power. Mm -hmm. But they did something. Go to Amos. Show them. They did something. That law, A, hey, we got garrisons in Edom. We got Edomites serving David. Right. Y'all could be around. Y'all gonna be in order, or we gonna, you know, take your heads. But you could be around, you know. But they did something. He read what Amalek did. But now watch this. You want me to start at nine? Please. It's the book of Amos, chapter one and verse nine. Thus saith the Lord: For three transgressions of Tyrus and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. Damn. So the Africans came and got you and sold you to the Edomites. Yep. Was, there's nothing new under the sun. Right. Read on. And remember not the brotherly covenant. What was the brotherly covenant? Thou, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian because thou were also a stranger. But the Egyptian... Is 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 the uh, Canaanite Tyre and Tyre represents Canaan. Read it again. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I would not turn away the punishment thereof, mm -hmm. because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. So what the Lord going to do? But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyrus, mm -hmm. which shall devour the palace thereof, palaces thereof. And that's why they look like that right now. Right. That's why they eating missiles from the Iron Dome defense. Yep, right. And it ain't and they can't fight back. All yep. right. Read on. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I would not turn away the punishment thereof. Why? Because he did not pursue. Bro, read Sinai, it right. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and, and his anger did tear perpetually and and he kept his wrath forever so you came into the chat uh captain Saba Edomite entered the chat uh -huh. to save Esau but the bible says that right. he hates you he kept his wrath forever and he pursues you with the sword even to this day he hate you but you you trying to convince me to love him 
That's what's wrong with you, uh, acceptable Negroes, man. Yep. You got to have faith that if you behave yourself wisely, the Most High will exalt you and, and look after you. You do not have to tap dance for the heathen to make it. The Most High is why you make it. You know how many brothers tell me, white man done more for me than anybody? Yeah. That is the wrong outlook. Actually, what's what? happening is the Most High is using the heathen to bless you. So the Most High did, did more for you than anybody. But our brothers don't understand how to approach life like that because mm -hmm. they don't have teachers. And that's why we go out in the street. You understand, Ock? I appreciate that. 100%. My, my pleasure, brother. My pleasure. May I, ask, may I ask one more question, please? All right. One more question. Yes. Okay. Um, the Israelites will be used as the Lord's battle act to take out vengeance on the heathen. Is that going to kind of give me a timeline? Is that going to be after Jacob's trouble, before Christ comes, before Yahweh Shah comes back, or is it going to be after he comes and his, his garment is covered with, with uh, red, scarlet red, then he's going to let us go out and clean up the rest so of the battle axe. When are we going to be chasing the one is chasing 50 and 50 is chasing 1,000? When are we going to get those so, powers? Before, so, so when the Lord... After Jacob's trouble, for what? So, so first of all, to give a timeline is presumptuous, yeah. and that's a sin. I'm not going to mm -hmm. do that. I'm not going to presume to know... Okay. Okay. I'm not going to presume to know when the most high, because that's really what we're doing. We're divining when the Lord is going to come back. <laughs> and we're trying to look at the events so that we could put two and two together to predict when. But even the son of man doesn't know when. Right. So what I'll say is this. Right. What I'll say is this. When it says, who is this that comes from Basra with his garments dyed as if he trodden in the wine press? And then in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. it tells you his garment is like one that uh, trying in the wine press. Christ coming from Edom has to be with the destruction of Edom. Mm -hmm. Christ not going to go to mm -hmm. Edom, destroy them. His garment is covered in blood, and then there's some Edomites over there still chilling, deciding how they're going to get back. Okay. So I would say, in my opinion, I didn't pull no okay. precept. In my opinion, Christ coming from Edom with his garments dyed. Is represents the end and destruction of Edom. Come. Christ representing the nation is as our ruler and our general most likely would mean that that's when we go with him to do that destroying. When we already okay. have been given the power to rule the nations with the rod of iron and that's when we'll be setting people to flight. All right. So instead of trying to pinpoint a time period, I'm trying to pinpoint a circumstance. So I'm not thinking of it as Jesus Christ by himself is doing warfare by himself against millions of Edomites like a Hollywood movie. I would say that mm -hmm. Jesus Christ coming out of Basra covered in blood represents the nation of Israel defeating their mortal enemy in Christ. Okay. That's the way I look at that. Thank you. I make that, that, that's fine. I make sense to me. All right, because um, um yeah, it, it makes sense. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to the book. Of, you're welcome, brother. Let's go to the book of Joel, and let's go to verse three and chapter three and verse fourteen. Joel chapter three and fourteen. It's the book of Joel, chapter three and verse fourteen. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So where we at? It's judgment mm -hmm. for the nations. Yeah, Everybody's you? there. Go ahead. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Wisdom is going to be removed from the wise men. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And there ain't going to be no one else to stand against the Lord and his people. Everybody's going to take a subservient position. Right? The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. The Lord roaring out of Zion is the nation of Israel doing the roaring. It, Get, he's empowered us. We have now become like David. Go ahead. And the heavens 
and the earth shall shake because of warfare. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and, and the strength of the children of Israel. So all that warfare is going on, but the Israelites are going to be empowered by the strength of the Lord. Read on. So shall ye know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. And Zion is another name for Jerusalem, which 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 is another name for Israel. But Israel is a people before it's a place. Read. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. And? And there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Now what? That's prophecy. Mm -hmm. That has not happened yet. Don't even try that. So... That means that the heathen ain't coming in there. Right. But you making people in the spiritual Israelites, this prophecy can't be. Because now the stranger is, when you say spiritual Israelite, you mean stranger. Yeah. He's not an Israelite, but he's with us. That's a stranger. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says the stranger can't come through her no more. Right. And that's right. Because now he's become an Israelite. So now he transformed from a heathen into it. Nobody will take that position. That's complete replacement theology. That's modern speak. Even Jews in Jerusalem don't believe that. So don't even try that. So don't tell me no first century Christian was ever teaching no madness like that. All right. Read on. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine. So the leaders, the, the people in power will teach a new doctrine. And the hills shall flow with milk. And the understanding of the Lord will be now the doctrine of the earth. Come on. And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. Mm -hmm. And a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. And the doctrine of God is now what's going to go out into that's the a, world. That's Revelation a, 22 yeah, and 1. Yeah. Yes, very good. Read on. Egypt shall be a desolation. Damn. They finished. Read. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. Hold on. Ain't at this time period is spiritual is Israelites walking around now. Ain't no more Edomite. Ain't no more Egyptian. But no, the Bible says these nations are going to get their judgment. Come on. Mm -hmm. For the violence against the children of Judah. That's why they're getting it. Because they was touching us. Yeah. Read. Because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So now what are you talking about? Now Egypt has to be destroyed. Are you talking about the place or the people? When we was talking about Zion, was we talking about the place or the people? So when, when we're talking about Egypt, are we talking about the place or the people? We're talking about the people. Right. Come on. But Judah shall dwell forever mm -hmm. and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For what? For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. How's he going to do that? What's tonight's lesson? How's he going to cleanse their blood? Through Christ. Yes. Read on. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. For the Lord is with the people, and the people are the Israelites. That's clear. So, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Just to um, add on yeah. for the edification for the brother. Yes. B. Go ahead. I didn't say anything. I... Okay. I'm sorry. Um, Real, real quick, I know you, you, you're pressed on time. For uh, history accountability, the thousand years from the time of the, the fall of the Roman Empire to the Renaissance, that was the time, am I correct in assuming, that was the time that the Edomites uh, became what was known as the Neanderthals? No. Because they were they were told to bray in the trees? No. Whether, no. Which means grow. No. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. No, that's not that time period. Okay. Okay. Please clarify that. I, I've never heard that doctrine, but uh, Neanderthal is not uh, that. That's not even a, a true human. Mm -hmm. I think he's talking about when they was in, um, in the Caucasus Mountains when they was. Uh, yeah, but that, those was them as people. They wasn't transformed into another type of Homo sapien. Like they didn't become. A Neanderthal is another type of being. Like that's not a human. That's a different creature, right? It's a. You've never seen a Neanderthal. It's not a Homo sapien. You've you've seen a gorilla. You've mm -hmm. seen a baboon. You've seen an orangutan. Mm -hmm. You've never seen a Neanderthal. They assert the Neanderthal is a proto-human 
steep brow, but that could be another type of ape. A human is a human. You understand, Ark? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Wouldn't I'm just going about one like of the camps was Rexes? explaining That's that this person was because saying. when they said that the when it when the scripture says Job um, states that uh, they braid in the tree, they oh, meant okay. they translated it, I guess, from Hebrew, saying that braid actually means that they lost the uh, ability to speak because they were separated from humanity. That's possible. And that's what, that, that's what the that's what the other Hebrew Israelite camp. Uh, I don't like that though. Just tell me. Look, I, I don't want to teach against brothers that I don't even know who you're talking about. If you're going to name them, I understand, but I'm not going to battle doctrine with brothers that's not here because they should be bringing it forward. Right. 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 This, this was a this was a while ago, about five years ago. I'm not even sure exactly which one it was. It's been a long time. It was just something I just w was always uh, uh, curious about because um, I just accepted it as uh, as um, you know. What was the translate or the uh, translation from the scripture? Listen, it, 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 listen, it, 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 it to me. Go ahead. Listen, losing the ability to speak don't turn you into a different type of human. All right, I a different that, type yeah. of uh, biped. No, a Neanderthal is a different type of creature. That's a perspective creature. It's a type of living creature that is not like what you and I are. All right, Esau is in in essence and substance <laughs> like what you and I are, all right? He's a human. Well, well Eliel would contend that he's not a human because yeah. he does not have hue. He, he, he lacks right. melanin. But what I'm the point I'm trying to make is a Neanderthal is another entity. I don't even think a Neanderthal is on a level of even understanding what it means to deal with scripture and, mm -hmm. and social societal behavior. That's a different creature and it is asserted that it was a a primordial man let alone but you've never seen that yeah. right so i've seen yeah. a monkey well, use a yeah. stick to kill something it's it but if you took his bones and skinned them now they're telling me it was a short type of human right. no it's a monkey right. but that's you know that's esau in his game so I, let alone that Right after being primal yeah, or Neanderthal. Real quick, bro. Real quick, you real quick too many times. You real quick too many times. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. We gotta let somebody else get a question, and we're gonna take like two more. We're gonna shut okay. it down. I'll call back next Friday. I'll call back next Friday, and thank you. You're welcome, Mark. Anytime. Okay. All right. Bye what bye. you were saying? No, I was just saying. Let alone them being Neanderthal or damn, just hung up. <laughs> Primal or Neanderthal, right after that time period, they they sophisticated enough to create the Renaissance. Right, and I, I believe that that uh, scripture in Job is really just to describe the bar barbarism of those people or of Esau, because even he said, he even said later on in that verse, I wouldn't even suffer them to sleep with my dogs to lay in the, in the same place <laughs> as my dogs. He was just basically yeah. saying these people are like vile, and, he, and I'm even. And now I'm uh, subservient. I look as a I'm subservient to them. Like I've become in such a low state that even these dogs have encompassed me. It's crazy. In spirit. Con, con. So we got any more questions? All right. If no more questions is on the call, I'm gonna try to scroll up and get uh, some questions. Hello. Okay, go ahead. Shalom, go ahead. All right, the brother said Shalom, but he went, he went silent. Maybe he was just saying what's up. Yeah. Um, that's a whole lesson. What you, what you say, brother? We waiting for you to say something. Uh, I can't hear you. I'm, uh, the phone is going in and out. What you say? We waiting for you to say something. My question was, um, is Christ considered a human sacrifice? Like, as far from an Old Testament brother's uh, perspective, that's the question. Christ dying for us is proof that mankind has the potential to be perfect because he came in the flesh 
The spiritual being, Yahweh Shai, came in and manifested in the flesh and lived a sinless life. But his death is not in vain. Him dying was for the sake of the nation. He mediated between us and God. Our sins alienated us from God. And according to the Most High, we should be destroyed. But because his son came and mediated between us through his death, we now have a chance. This was prophesied to happen. A human sacrifice is like, I'm a sinner. I'm going to kill a man. Now I'm doing it. I'm using the sacrifice for me to mediate with God. But Christ, the spiritual being, mediated for me and gave up himself to die. I didn't sacrifice Christ. Right. Do you understand what I'm about to say? Yeah, I would say yeah. I would say no. It's not a human sacrifice because the 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 leaders of Israel, the Pharisees and scribes, who wanted to kill him, they weren't killing him with intentions to atone for their sins. No, they, they killed them. They wanted him dead because they didn't like what he was talking about. And they will lose their position. Right. They, they weren't intending to. to yo 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 yo. When you call in, please mute your phone. That. When they when they when they was having him killed, they wasn't intending for him to be their sacrifice. They they killed him because they didn't like him and they was gonna lose their power. They was gonna lose their their reign over the people. You understand, brother? Um I I kind of understand it's just um like I heard you when you said that the Israelites like didn't give Christ as a sacrifice, but like it's it's still I mean because he died he died for oh. us, but it's hard to say like you know when no man can die for you and then him being a sacrifice it's just kind of it's just confused to me and stuff like that. Well, you have to show me a scripture that what you were referring to when you said no man can die for you. You have to show me that what you're referring to, and we have to make sure that that scripture is making the point that you trying to make. And I think your point is Christ cannot die for the sins of another person. So you'd have to show me that. Then we can discuss it because Christ's circumstance is different. I didn't sacrifice Christ. I didn't say, yo, I'm a sinner, but I'm going to let you die so I could be made right. It wasn't done like that. Christ willingly allowed himself to be killed as a mediation between God and the sins of the people that he loved. So Christ being our king, we are his subjects, willingly did something to justify his subjects. We didn't sacrifice Christ. He went to the slaughter willingly and his death exemplified a sacrifice that could cover our sins where the Mosaic law could not justify us. That's where Isaiah 53 comes in. It even says that he's going to go as a sheep to the slaughter. Yes. I'm not going to ask no questions. No questions? Um, it's, it's, I'm understanding, though. I definitely hear y'all understand it. I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. This book of John, chapter 15, and verse 13. Let's speak up. This book of John, chapter 15, and verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, Yahweh Shai wasn't a sacrifice in, in the sense that I, I, I'm, I'm atoning for my sins. So I have to sac I'm, I'm sacrificing Christ. No, Christ willingly laid down his life for for Israel so that Israel can have a chance of repentance. He's the good shepherd. That's that's a good precept. But for this situation, you probably wouldn't want to use that or because they they're coming from the perspective of they don't really believe in Christ from no. what it, from what it sounds like so they okay. they wouldn't they wouldn't hold to that okay. What's up? now the the writer of Hebrews has an entire commentary on this idea but say what you got to say first well i was going to say uh 
regardless of their perspective of whether Christ was uh, was really a man or really walked here or not, it it is stated that, and that's something that's believed through through the spirit of the law that you are to lay down your life for your brother, right? If you're not to stand against the blood of your brother and allow him to be oppressed and allow these things to, to fall upon him anyway. So if you're laying down your life for your brethren as uh, uh, the head of the people or a teacher or a leader or a shepherd, right? That's something that's worthy. That's something that's counted worthy inside the Lord. So for Christ to do that would not be human sacrifice, for Christ to do that, that would be him laying down his life for his brethren, for his people, regardless. So from the standpoint of them asking, is it a human sacrifice? No, that's a man laying down his life for his people. It's almost in the same sense as when you see it in see it as examples in movies or heroes. Right. They, they'll they die for their people. They die for the people that they're trying to save. It's the, in a the sense the same thing. That's You wouldn't say that's a right. human sacrifice. It's just him putting risking his life for his people or putting his life on the line for his people. Now let's read that in Hebrews chapter nine and um, start at verse 11. This book of Hebrews chapter nine and verse 11. Go ahead. And it reads, but Christ being come. This will be the last question. Go ahead. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. That's the conversation we have in Christ's blood redeems us. Go ahead. For the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit of offered himself without spot to God. No, we sacrificed Christ for us. Offered himself without spot to God. So first of all, Christ can't be a human sacrifice because no human sacrificed him. Christ offered himself for us. Right. That's what they're missing when they say that. Read on. Purge your, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Read. And for this cause... He is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And it's already promised, okay? It's already promised. I'm going to have to block you, Travis. I asked you specifically not to do that. Read on. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. Testator. testator. Come on. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Come on. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Right. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Saying what? Saying this is the blood of the testament which God has enjoined unto you. Right. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So without shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. Read on. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens shall be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. So we're about to receive a better sacrifice than the blood of rams and goats. Come on. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. This sacrifice is actually going to not go into a building and be burned and the smoke goes up. This sacrifice is going to go before the Lord himself in the presence of God. This is a better sacrifice. Read on. Nor yet that he should offer himself often. As he, he we offered him. As he should offer himself often. As the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. Come on. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. See, if Christ has to do this every time you sin then he must have offered himself as a sacrifice since the earth began. 
This is new what's happening here. And he's not supposed to do this often. That's also what he's going to teach you in chapter 10. Read on. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. No, we sacrificed him. By the sacrifice of himself. He sacrificed himself for our sins to mediate for us before the Lord. And this is why Christ is amazing. Mm -hmm. This ain't no regular guy. Right. The New Test, the, the old OT brothers be thinking of Christ like he's some Joe Blow off the street. Exactly. No, this is the word made flesh. Coming to see the condition of man and being willing to die for our sins so that we can have a chance to be made right with God. Read on. After condemning and as sin it, in the flesh. Yes. And as it is a point. How did Christ condemn sin, sin in the flesh? In the flesh right. Did he kill sin? No, because no. sin still exists. What does that mean? That means Christ made sin look bad because he never did it. He in condemned it in his flesh. In, the, in his sinful flesh, he never sinned. So he condemned sin. Right. That's the same thing with the Queen of Sheba and Jonah. How their examples condemn you right. when they did something that you wasn't willing to do. Right. It's the king's English, muscle heads. Read on. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Come on. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And you have to look for him. And acknowledge his sacrifice. Not you sacrificing him. You acknowledge that he sacrificed himself. And therefore you have the opportunity to take part in that grace that his sacrifice offers. Christ is deep. You should be able to close the book right there. Yeah. Our elders taught us that Christ was deep. And if you're not dealing with Yahweh Shai, you're not really deep. Right. Because it is. you have to understand prophecy to understand him. You understand, brother? Uh, yes. I mean, I understand for the most part. Uh, but I do, because I, I thought I heard you say that, um, like, for, like, um, the reasons why he died, and, um, I don't want to misquote you, but you said something like the reason why he died is why, why the law was changed, because it's carnal, something like that. No, like, definitely didn't here. say that. No, no, no. that. The law being changed had nothing to do with him dying. The law had to be changed because your priesthood is Levitical which means you need the bloods of rams and goats for remission of sin. And there are certain sins that you cannot repent for. You have to die. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Yeah, true. So if you are Old Testament only and you meet a gay person, don't teach them because there's nothing you can do for them. Right? Right. Because they can't repent according to the law. Right? right? But now we have a better priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, meaning it's already been here. It's not something new. Mm -hmm. Levi paid tithes to Melchizedek mm -hmm. while he was in his father's loins. Res put respect on that priesthood because that was before yours, Levi. You know what I just thought about? What? For people not to believe in in Yahweh Shai, you really don't even you don't believe in the law, right? Because, because you're not you're not doing what you're not doing what the law says, right? You're not going to kill these people when you see them commit these sins. Right. The fact and I, you, I I agree with, I agree with that. Um, when I be with my other Israelite brother, they just be like, oh, we're not possession, like not giving him the sacrifices. We're we're not possession, and I think they be like say like um. But the Most High got mercy and stuff like that, stuff like that. Well, uh, well the Most High has mercy, but if if you are a sodomite, what is he telling you to do? What yeah, about? I, I, I'm not. I mean, I want to talk about like sodomites. I mean, because uh, uh, even somebody who woke, you know, they is a like, you know, can't give a, um, a sacrifice. Like they ain't got no altar and stuff. Got it. Uh, so this is Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of the goats mm. or of the he goats. So the Lord is telling you, I don't want your burnt offerings because it means nothing to me. Because it's, it's in fact, he also says it's an abhorring, right? It's an abhorring to him because that's not sufficient enough to cover your sins. Like mm -hmm. the sacrifice of rams and bullocks, if that was sufficient enough, 
a sodomite would sacrifice a ram and bullet and would continue to be a sodomite. That's what Hebrews 10 and 1 talks about. Right. So, so if you are an OT no, only and don't believe cool. in the sacrifice of Christ, you have no hope because you did not know you were an Israelite. And you did not know to keep the law, sex, commandments of God. So you are already condemned by death. Really? Really? The sacrifice is only going to work for what it can work for. Right. If, if your sacrifice for a certain, uh, a certain crime against the Lord, your sacrifice is supposed to atone for it. But right. you can't atone for being a murderer. You can't, you can't atone for being a blasphemer. Mm -hmm. You can't atone for being an idolater. Okay. You can't atone for missing Passover. You can't atone for missing Day of Atonement. You can't atone for being a sodomite. Right. You can't atone right. for being a rapist. You can't atone for breaking the Sabbath. You can't atone for breaking the Sabbath. So ain't no sacrifice for that. No, none. That's what Christ is. Christ none. is the sacrifice. And guess who's been doing those things? People that never even heard the law. Mm -hmm. But when Israelites scattered abroad by default not know the law. So right. damn, I, I guess I don't have hope in the world. Right. No, we have Christ. That's right. That's the point. Right. You understand that, brother? Uh for sure. I, and I appreciate, you know, you breaking it down for me. I, I definitely got some clarity on it for sure. All praises. Uh, Dwight, you have to watch the video from the beginning. You shouldn't be asking that. Um, if you watch the video from the beginning, you might have just got hit. So just watch the video from the beginning, and that answer is right there, because that's what this lesson is about. Right. So in short, everybody, Christ is not a human sacrifice, because ain't nobody sacrificed him. Mm -hmm. He offered himself. Number two, the blood of rams and goats cannot take away sin. It can atone for it, but it can't take it away. Right. And there's even certain sins that it can't atone for. No. But Christ's blood actually removes sin. Now a man actually has the opportunity to be perfect. And that's a better priesthood. That doesn't mean the law changes. That means now that more options are available to you to serve God the right way. Because that's what it's all about. It ain't after this talk, no New Testament believer should think you can't keep the commandments or shouldn't mm -hmm. after this. Because now Hebrews 10, 26. Let's stop. God, Hebrews 10, 26. This book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. What's the truth? The law says commandment. Prove it. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. This book of Psalms, chapter Why don't you hold the scripture you at and let somebody else get the other precept? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. What that say? Dang. Like 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Mm -hmm. So the law is the truth. Read it again. For if we sin willfully after that, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Why are we arguing? Sin is the transgression of the law. If you break the law willfully after you learn the law, that's all it says. Read on. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Ain't no sacrifice for that. Read on. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and a fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. So, and you consider the adversary of God because you sin it on purpose. So now no New Testament believer after hearing this lesson should think for a second that you're not supposed to be keeping the commandments because that don't say that. Right. All right. And um and we could deal with any other scoff in like manner. Just send us an email and we'll address it on Friday Sabbath class. I hope everybody enjoyed that. All right. I enjoyed teaching it. I enjoyed um doing the work with my brothers that you see with me okay. and the ones that you don't see. I enjoy being with them and, and the sisters as well. So we um we got camp tomorrow all right um at uh 3 p.m at Woodruff Park. All right, we're going to get out there around two to set up and begin. Okay, uh, make sure you come uh, and uh, we got accommodations for the women and the children. Uh, we kick the we kick the doctrine in a peaceful setting. We protect everybody and do the best we could do. Um, with that said, we're going to send up the prayers. We're not going to do it on the YouTube. Just call the number at the bottom of the screen. But do me a favor when you call them, make sure you mute your phone. Because um, it's a delay and an echo. So please mute your phone. We're going to send up the Sabbath prayer. All right. You're welcome to join us. Thank you for uh, 
sitting through the class. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Please watch our other classes throughout the week and our camp videos. We the Sons of Thunder. It's our heart, prayer, and desire for Israel that they might be saved. Khan? Khan. All right, I'm going to let the uh, number scroll at the bottom for a little while so people can call in. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.